What's up, family? What's up? What's up? Welcome to Late Night. Late Night with Jervis Live Worldwide and Shay Samuels coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, and Maryland. This very beautiful Charm City. Hope you had a great Monday. Yeah, yeah. Batman was busy today. Yeah, he was out of town on weekend. That's right. Shout out to Graysonville, Maryland. That's right. Shout out to DC. That's right. We was hanging out at Howard University. All right, let's bring Shay Shay so we get this show rolling. What's up, Shay Shay? How you doing? Happy Monday, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide, a.k.a. The Batman. Yeah. How was your weekend? Was it busy? Long. It was busy. You know, when as a, as a I guess I would say like as an artist, um, when you don't have, like when you have that rest period, I'm always looking at my calendar because I'm always doing something. Been like, am I missing something? <laughs> Did I miss an event? Did I miss, you know? So, um, so I got a chance to rest this this weekend and spend some time with the grandbaby, and um, yeah, I got a chance to rest. But it was a very, very good weekend, very productive weekend. Yeah, good for you, good for you. Yes, it was. Shout out to all our listeners out there. So, um, appreciate everybody to tune in starting at eight o'clock with. Pep Talk with Re, they're doing their thing with the watch. That's right. Uh, we had a lot of people watching the show on the watch party. And then we had Lakeisha Mosey's special guest was Christian Anderson. Just left us that beautiful song called um, Mama On My Mind. Man, that song is awesome. You get a chance to hear that? That's a powerful piece. I did. I heard it. Yeah, it's yeah. very powerful. Yeah, man. I'm at to listen to that. Woo. Man, so there's some songs out there just give you chills. You know, is that a hit when a song gives yeah. you chills? It's only ran across yeah, well, a few. Well, you them. know, um, it's a, it, 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 I think each song has its own. Um, that, put it this way: it doesn't make it a hit, 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 but it does definitely pull strings. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there. It's like I got a hit because it's a song that kind of like gives you those chills. But when you sing but the baby's live, song is a hit, but I know. Can, but you sing that live somewhere. You catch that audience at the yeah, right definitely. time, especially, you know, with worship, you know, pastor just gave an awesome sermon and then you end, yeah. end it on that note, you know, after you just finished giving up that loot, yeah. <laughs> put your money back in yeah. circulation <laughs> as they put the good now you can cry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely. Wow. Yeah. I love that song. I so, only, only heard a few of them like that. Where were you guys? Hmm? Were we- oh, I'm on where were, Where we? were you guys this weekend? Batman was in Graysonville. That's right, me and Jordy was in Graysonville with DJ Jazzman. We was hosting. He hosted uh, Merlin Gospel Live. We had uh, artists come down from Jersey. We had uh, a group from Baltimore. Uh, Brianna Ray and Ralph came down from PG County with their manager. We had Ty Bolden from um, Eastern Merlin. So we had, a, we had a great group. Great group, man. They They, they gave it up. It was uh, powerful performances. Really, Batman did a good job with the audio. Everybody was really uh, amazed how the audio sounded like Memorex. <laughs> sounded real live. Good. Live, live. Yeah. That's well, right. I mean, you are a professional. Yeah, I did mess up one time, though, man. Me and Jordy rode out the house. We missed one bag, and that bag had all my tripods uh, in it and my backdrop. Uh, <laughs> I know. So he worked extra hard. Well, we was looking at, um. well, the thing about it, is it was an awesome state. I mean, I love this building. It's in Graysonville. It's actually part of uh, the community center. It's been around for a while. Really nice facility, especially great for, you know, a lot of groups coming in need to change. And they got a kitchen and everything. They made some crab cakes and fried chicken that was off the chain. Um, I just love it. Though. So they're going to prepare the facility for when we take the showcase to the next level. So I think I'm going to stay in that building because it was very, I mean, I could back, I backed the Suburban right up to the door and me and Jordy unloaded that oh, baby and, and, and we only had like 10 feet to go. We was at the stage. So you can't beat that. Man, that was a, that was Shout a. Shout out to Jordan because he worked so hard. Yeah. He, that's, his, that's his job. That's his only his, job. We're I going to school. His, um, I loved his shout out that you gave him too, just saying how long it's been that he's been doing this. Um, he is definitely an intricate part of the positive power. Everybody get a chance to touch, you know, get a peek at Jordan. You know, <laughs> it's very part of my you, you know, I was, uh, 
the last time we were doing the red room, I was actually thinking to myself, you know, how much seed is being sown into him. Like he's there. And at times it may feel like he's not paying attention, but every now and then, depending on what we're talking about, He's focused. Oh, yeah. He, he be tuning in. You know, he, he'll fool you. He does this the same way. We think he's not paying attention. <laughs> and everybody said, well, he only wears his headphones all the time because you wear yours all the time. I know I've been wearing them for yeah. like seven years. He, and this is like uh, one of his best pair. He, he he went through a lot of beats, but this pair been been hanging in there. Yeah, he um, it was yeah, it was quite a journey him. for him because it was funny because, you know, always get a, you know, when we meet new people, we always introduce him. And um, and when I wrote that post, it kind of gave me like a, a presentation for him. You know, when we when we because a lot of these people was the yeah. first time, I'm, you know, we met, you know, it was the first time we met um, the uh, Christian hip hop uh, different. And they came down from Jersey, he brought, a, you know, a couple of people from a couple of friends. And um, of course, he met he met, um, you know, uh, John, uh, John Graham, Gregory Graham before because um, we shot uh-huh. them in Baltimore with Lakeisha. And um, I think it was his first. Oh, he met Ty because he met Ty here because she was on my journney with Paula G. And it was the first time he met Bria, right? Brianna Ray and Ralph. We're gonna be working with them again. So um, when I introduced them, you know, because you know people look at you and say, oh, you know, because nowadays you know people really can't really. I'm not gonna say they can't afford it, but they really don't want to put out too much money. I know with you guys and the recording, because you guys are paying for your recordings, your your producers, your music. You know, you guys got so many slices of the pie you got to divvy up. And so when it comes down to your music mm-hmm. video and your performances, you you know you need those things because it's part of your marketing. But it's like you really don't want to spend right. more than you need to spend. So so basically, I don't, I don't always hire a second and third cameraman because then you're talking about you know, more money for you guys coming out your pocket. And a lot of times I shoot some of the stuff free bono. Cause that's actually, that show actually yeah. was sponsored. Um, that was actually sponsored. Community Center actually picked that the part of that tab up and, um, which we were very uh-huh. grateful for. So, um, so when I bring Jordan, you know, because he got a lot of experience, he been working with me for so long. You're talking about, we've been doing maybe like since 2013, doing stage plays. And so when I told them, I said, yeah, he shot a stage play with Shamrock from The Wire, HBO The Wire. He, he, you know, he does stage, but this guy actually yeah. was, um, I, I think he performed with The Temptations for a while because he was, because I think, I think he got introduced to them by Muhammad Ali. And, um, so, you know, we shot like two mm-hmm. stage plays with him. He actually, had a meeting with, with us because he wanted us to shoot his movie. He had a, a movie he's working on. It's, it's taking a really long time, though, because he's using his house for the stage setting. So I haven't heard from him in a minute. But then he shot he shot Shirley Murdoch. Shirley Murdoch, international mm-hmm. R&B superstar. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, West, and, West, and West Morgan with you and, um, and, and uh, David. And, um, yeah. And, and uh, the Corinth. He did good. That's he did. He did. Um, he did an amazing job. You know that video came up, and I said, "Look at Jerry." We all so that was two years ago now, and it's we looked long. at that video. I'm like, it was kind of like where it all started. Yeah, almost. I know. Wow, just two, I, I, so I only have known you for only two years. Well, I met you before no, that. We met. I met you we before. met there face to face. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because I right, cause that was my first time meeting <laughs> your mom because she was a big fan of the radio show. So, um, yeah, okay. And, and, of course, you know, we did. We have done a lot of stuff for, for Jay Nicole. Basically, uh, Jay, Charles, Charles Clark, and Jay basically got us um, connected with the gospel community because, remember, we were just doing stage plays in, um, in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And um, basically, that was our thing. You know, we was, you know, we was meeting most of the, you know, but a lot of the stage uh, producers, they do like two, three plays uh a year, some of them. They 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 work pretty regularly, but um, uh-huh. I thought that was going to lead us into motion pictures because that I mean the stuff looks so good. It was like they kept saying, "Oh wow, we need to make this a movie," but um, of course, you know, yeah. you need a lot of space, and and then when they, you know, I don't think they they were ready for that expense because you you know you can't do a whole movie in one day, <laughs> no stage play. So I don't think they were really ready for that. You know, you asking for more commitment from your actors. I'm waiting for that day one to come, you know, to do a, a real nice stage play for television. Not one where you're just pointing and shooting, but, you know, you can really hook it it's up nice. Coming. Yeah, yeah, we was hoping Zenobia would be that be that person. Um, 
you know, but you know, everybody's in seasons. They they know when that time come. But I just say, with the way social media is, why not? You know, put your stuff mm-hmm. out there. I mean, one yeah, day you're gonna be yeah. 80 years old and you're gonna look back and say, "Wow, remember that stage play I did?" And nobody remember it. <laughs> no, we don't remember that, Granny. Right? No, Granny. Right. Nobody and remember. I think that's what most people have to realize too, because all of this stuff. Um, I don't know about Facebook, but all of like, you know, Paula G and I shout out to her, but we talk about this all the time. I asked her a question. It was like, you know, if social media went away, what does your brand look like? What does marketing you look like? And so I think you had a good point, like just that foot tra- traffic. Sometimes you just got to get back into um, the old school foot traffic and just building relationships because, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, social media gets you there. But if it was all taken away, what does your brand look like? So something to think about as, um, you know, artists and authors. <laughs> That's right. And, we be back know, um, emailing. Whoever. We be emailing our stuff out again. <laughs> this is what we be doing. Yeah. Sending big files to people. Yeah. So I can't download this. You know, Dropboxing. <laughs> Everybody be getting Dropbox all day. That's that's what right. be happening. Uh huh. Slow mo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're very grateful for where you know Paula is with um, WATC. You know, especially they rocking the land alive, and you know she's working with that 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 piece and. You know, and of course, we're gonna yeah. be we're gonna be in Atlanta, everybody, on October 11th. We, we invited you guys to come out yeah. to the Good Acting Studio. You have to get a ticket, though. You have to get a ticket because it's limited seating. Uh, you get an opportunity to meet Paula G. Uh, she said the executives from WATC gonna be there, and uh, we get a chance to meet some people that you friends with on Facebook. It's gonna be nice. We had a great yeah. time the last time, right, Shay? So come on, amazing time the last yeah, time. Yeah, right. we were more than just good. Yeah. Had an amazing time. Yeah, we we darn near shut we shut the hotel down. Yeah, yeah, we still <laughs> still we were, we were we were like the livest party of party people that night. Yeah, you know they supposed to be renovating that hotel. I'm gonna have to call them because I haven't made reservations yet, and uh, I wanted to see. Lakeisha's swear down a holiday in is the bomb. <laughs> I was like, okay, we'll see. But I like the space. Shout out to Lakeisha. Yeah. I like the space that the that that hotel had, the Hamptons. You know, it's a nice size. But anyway, well, we're gonna. Got, you know, we got we got people for um, just for my journey. So I think you need to reiterate again because you know people are just kind of like they're not getting tickets for my journey. So I think you need to reiterate: if you don't have a ticket, you're not getting in. That's right. You gotta have a ticket to get in. You can't just combine. Miss <laughs> Paula gonna have security there too. So um. You got to come out. I might be security that day. That's right. Tell me, be the boss. <laughs> but we, but we, have a, we have a great time. Are we going to fly in early, get a chance to hang out with the ladies, have lunch, and then head to the set. And um, it's going to be nice, um, Paula. And I think you guys will be doing a dry run real soon. Make sure um, the theater's ready, mm-hmm. you know, for the production. So it's going to be yeah. good. Of course, Paula's, you know, she's based here. And um, outside of Baltimore with her show, but we like to come out there to hang out, you know, get Batman out of town a little bit. But we've been doing a lot, though. Again, shout out to uh, Graysonville for hosting Maryland Gospel Live. We're going to be back out there again. Matter of fact, they actually talking to me now about producing Lakeisha Mosley's show. Uh, I think we're looking at probably December. They want to they want to do a live studio audience and and uh, bring out the leadership because they heard about the. The leaders, the your free yourself conference. That's right, the healing conference. So, uh, and they just and a, a brand new church is actually being built right across the street. Um, I actually heard that that pastor that actually has a radio show in the Baltimore area. So I, I can't remember who, who it is right now, but uh, we're gonna be building some surge relationships in that community. And you guys got to come out there, man. The bay is beautiful. Going across that bay bridge um, on Saturday was a sight for sore. You know, you're talking about a beautiful day. Mm, beautiful day. The bay was looking nice. So we're going to get Shay out there, too, do the red room. Mm-hmm. Get, do some before. We'll come out and, and the do the. Room. We'll come out and do the. Come on, do Merlin Gospel Live. Because we're going to be airing that on, on your show oh. and, um, and Paula's show. So people get a chance to actually see that on, on, on cable. In the Georgia area. Good. Yeah. And, of course, Definitely. social media. Social media we'll is, is that huge. That That's right. So uh, it looks good, too. I just finished looking at the taping. Um, you know what's crazy? Real quick, I know Sherelle waiting to talk to you. I was um, taping. You know, normally you know how I tape with my phone. Apple did a crazy download last week. 
they didn't really work out that well. And I think they have another one because Joe said, oh, dad, they released another one. I said, yeah, because all my recordings been dark. You know, and I didn't even really notice it until because uh-huh. um, I was so tired on Sunday. I don't even remember what I was doing. Everything looked dark <laughs> <laughs> for like going in there editing, you know. So um, excuse the footage that we released on Facebook. But, yeah, it looks good. I looked at it today. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why my phone. I'll have to go. You didn't see it? Didn't I'll see have it? to go check it out. Oh, Jerry, because you do pretty well, and I can I know this like the things, just so I'll definitely. Yeah, it was I'll dark. Yeah, it was really dark, but it sounded good though. The, the audio was awesome. <laughs> the audio was great. I don't know what, why the the video was so dark. I mean, I think I can go in and lighten it with the software, but that was on my phone, so we'll see. But anyway, um, we're gonna be releasing that footage real soon on social media, um, so we can get the you know the word out on Merlin Gospel Live. So. Uh, I was happy to just to work with, I think we were working with five, six artists, and that was great because we didn't have to be there all night. You know how we go. We shoot all night. So uh, me and Jordy had a chance to go see Grandma because you know, my mom don't live that far from that from that set. But anyway, let me shut it down and, and um, bring your guests out. We got Miss Sherelle Gray. I think she's actually from the Baltimore area, and we hope to do some work with her soon. Get her on the Red Room, right? That work? Yes. Amen. All right, Shay, well, have a great show. Let me say hi to Miss Sherelle. Hey, Miss Sherelle. Miss Gray, how you doing? Welcome to Positive Power. Late night. Hey, it's Sherelle, Miss Lady. Miss Lady. Hi. Hey, hey. hey a real, real quick question, Miss uh-huh. Lady. Are you, are you still in the Baltimore area? Yes, I am. Okay, we got the hook up then. Yeah, because Shay be back. Shay, you be back soon, right, to do some more shows? I'm not sure what your schedule like for the rest of this year, but I'm hoping you'll be back. <laughs> She's not saying nothing. You looking at your calendar? Shay, you still there? Oh, she might be on mute. Or she dropped and I'm looking at her. All right, well, this is what we're going to do. So, Miss Miss Lady, so tell real quick before uh, Shay come back. So, um, tell, tell me how long you've been um. You know, performing in Baltimore. I haven't ran into you yet. Oh, shoot. The dog on system drive. System drive. Let me go ahead and roll the song real quick. Everything is right. Are you ready? Time to shine, yeah, yeah, woo! Banana boat, sha shine, hey! Now get it, yeah, yeah! Let's shine! We gon' shine, you gon' shine, we gon' shine, we gon' shine, hey! We gon' shine! Podcast. All right, Miss Miss I'm sorry, Miss Lady, you still there? Hello. Yeah, we had um had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> Skype dropped on me. Anyway, we connected again, but Shay dropped for some reason. I must have clicked them by mistake. So anyway, I know you was telling me that you you said you're originally from Baltimore and you're still living in the area. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So where can people find you if they want to see you perform, perform live? You said where can people find me? Yeah, where can people find you? Well, actually, I don't even have um, no shows booked for right now, but I'm open for booking, church events, um, any type of gatherings where you're looking for performers I'm open for booking alright so I mean do you perform at your church like I'm somebody I mean like if somebody uh, wants to see you perform on Sundays are you performing like with your praise team oh yeah I sing on the praise team the choir 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, cool, cool. What I do have, I think I was able to download your your video, Grateful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and um, play that real quick. And then I'm going to see what's going on with Shay. Okay, is that fine? Okay. Worldwide Podcast. Sorry, sorry about that, ladies. Skype, Skype was acting up on me. Are you connected back, Shay? I'm here. Yes. I'm here. All right. Okay. Well, look. Go ahead and start your interview. Uh, we just we, we played a little piece of "Grateful" by um, Miss Lady. So um, she says she's. I remember our conversation now because your your gospel music has like a combination of hip hop. I mean, uh, house music because that's what Baltimore was pretty much all about. You know, back especially back in the day, house music drove drove our parties. Yeah. Pretty much, mm-hmm. you're right. A little, pretty much, it's kind of, um, well, it was kind of like a journey. So I kind of like, I had, you know, came across a lot of people who said they don't listen to gospel music and they don't want to hear it. So I said, well, let me get some type of sound, you know, beats, music that people can dance to and then, you know, sing about the Lord. And, you know, before you know they're they listening. That's right. So they like, oh, yeah, I, I kind of liked it. Yeah. So that's what kind of... Um, yeah, so now, dude, I, I remember our conversation, day. yeah, because we was talking about the house music. All right, Shay, was Miss Lady's yeah. ready to talk to you, so Batman is on mute, and we hope to meet you soon. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you again for joining us, and we do apologize for the technical difficulties. And I just thank you for your patience in advance. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the interview first. So if you can, um, tell us, tell the listening audience and the viewers on Facebook just who um, you are and what you want them to know about you. Well, I am, my name is Sherelle Gray, but my artist name is Sherelle Miss Lady. And I'm, you know, from Baltimore and I've been singing since I was nine years old, came up in the church and, you know, been around a lot of different choirs and groups. And, you know, it just helped motivate me even more to want to sing. So, you know, I just said, well, maybe I can start recording. And, you know, I write my own songs and, you know, so I will write songs that I know can relate to how people really feel, even how I feel, you know, and it can reach everyone and not just one person, 
it can actually reach everyone. So, you know, that's pretty much. I think that's a good thing, too, because what you're saying is basically you're making music that's universal and it can cross boundaries. And I think that's a gift that most people kind of not everyone has that gift to understand the audience, understand that they want more. They want to open up their music to more people. So congratulations to you on that. Um, So what was the title of your first song and how did you come about um, writing that song? You mean the the title of Grateful? Grateful is your first, the very first song that you've uh, um, written? No, actually, well, yeah, that is my first. I actually have Grateful on my Universal album, which I have on like different genres of music. But Grateful... Uh, that song actually came about because, you know, we you know we wake up every morning and, you know, we we say thank you, Lord, and then you 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 have to thank the Lord for everything that He's done for you. So, you know, saying thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. You started me on my way, and this new height I'm gaining. You know, and each and every day, and you grateful. Yeah. So. You know, pretty much it's like, just you let everyone know what you're grateful for. Right. Because some people so just, you just reach out to, just reach out when they need something or, and they're expecting it right away. But if you could tell you to be grateful, then everything that you're being, you're asking for, it will come. You just have to be grateful. Right. So tell us about some of the, you know, you talked a little bit about coming into the whole, like, I want to be a singer. This is why I want to be a singer. Um, What were some of your other ambitions outside of being a singer um, before becoming an artist? Um, As far as becoming a singer, I just, I mean, it's just, it's it's been stored in me. And I mean, like, I would just be outside singing. And they were like, girl, can you start singing, please? I'm like, but this is my gift from God. <laughs> so, you know, I was singing all kinds of music, uh, R&B, hip-hop. And they would say, well, you don't know what you want to do with yourself. Right. I said, yes, uh-huh. I do. I love singing. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I can see you doing that. I haven't met you yet. I haven't met you you yet <laughs> but um have you been have you done any acting or anything like that well i i used to be in plays with my mom when uh-huh. i was younger and then you know i got a little bit of that in me but i never like really actually I been in said, i really think you is something with all like jerry saying all of these i need you to get connected with jerry voice there's so many people that we are connected to <laughs> but you have you know and and i Honestly, like, I'm laughing, but it's just when you were talking about your mom's story, I can imagine. I don't know you, and I haven't met you personally, but I can just imagine you kind of, like, having these one-on-one conversations with yourself, but so serious about it. (laughs) So serious about it. Yeah. And it's almost like, yeah. (laughs) And it's almost like um, I really don't need a lot of people in the room. Me, myself, and I are just really good, and we do well together. And this is what I see with you. <laughs> and so it's a delight. When I was younger, like, I would be outside, and the neighbors would be like, can you stop it? So now <laughs> it's the time where, hey, you have to listen. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Right. So, I mean, it's, I think it's amazing, though. <laughs> it's amazing because with your <laughs> Your personality, even, like, I bet you light up any room. Like, when you walk in, you just light up any room. It's, like, kind of like if it's a dull room, you definitely are going to let your light shine in that room. You you are right. You are so right. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure. So we're just going to have some fun tonight. So um, I want to talk to you about some of your, you know, projects that you have coming up. I want to talk about any events that you have coming up. Um, we do have a short period of time. Time, but I'm going to try to squeeze it as much as I can while we have you on the line because I want people to know what you have going on. So what other projects are you working on right now? 
So I'm currently working on another gospel album. And right now I have a single that's out. It's not on all the platforms yet, but Mm -hmm. I put like a little snip of it on YouTube. And the song is called His Holy Name. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to go just type in Sherelle Miss Lady on YouTube mm-hmm. or you can type in Sherelle Miss Lady on Google and then it will pretty much take you to anything and everything that you're looking for. Okay. And I think that we might have that. Well, that's, we have, we have grateful, um, the video for grateful. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, so we'll go ahead and do that. So go ahead and give them that information again where they can get that, um, the song. Okay, so if you would like to listen to my new single that will be coming out soon, it's called His Holy Name, you can go to Google and just type in Sherelle Miss Lady, or you can go to YouTube and it will take you straight to the video if you type in Sherelle Miss Lady. All right, and what other events do you have coming up? Do you get a chance to travel outside of Maryland for your music? Well, I haven't really been, like, outside, far outside of Maryland, but I actually did have an um, opportunity to um, go to the GMW Listening Lounge, uh-huh. and that's in Washington, D.C. So I'm preparing to go back there, you know, the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Probably do another interview. So... Like I said, I'm open for bookings, and, you know, when people call me and say, can you come to this event, and I'd like you to sing here, and I'm like, sure. <laughs> so, right, that's right. all my that's time, what it, That's what it is for the love of singing, like, just the fact that you have a love for singing, you have a love for putting music together, you have a very unique sound when it comes down to the music, and we're going to play your song again, because um, we played it during um, somewhat of a break, but, but I do want people to listen to the song, um, I do want people to listen to the song, um, hear the song at least, and be able to purchase it because your song right now is on, Grateful is on Spotify. It's on all digital networks, correct? Yes. Okay. So, Jerry, we're going to go ahead and play her song, and then when we come back, I want to see if you can give me some words of encouragement. Um, We're going to find out where we can get all of your information. We talked about the booking, how people can get to you for booking, and um, any, you said you, were, you have a new song, so I do want to talk a little bit more about that song. But we're going to go to um, a, your song, Grateful, right now, for those who may not have been able to hear it um, during that technical difficulty. And then we'll get some words of encouragement right after the music break. Okay. You are listening to Dear Slide Worldwide Podcast.
you can't say anything else, you can say, thank you, Lord. I am grateful. That song is a hit. An absolute hit. Thank you. You, you are you still, okay, I was going to say, are you still here with me, Sherelle? <laughs> Sherelle, Miss Lady. Yeah, so how did you get here. the name Sherelle, Miss Lady? How did you, how did you get that, Sherelle, Miss Lady? All right, well, they just started calling me Miss Lady, Miss Lady. And I'm like, Miss Lady? Okay, well, Sherelle, Miss Lady. So it's pretty much like, okay, Sherelle, oh, you, thank you so, oh, you're so churchy, so holy, so da 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 like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't come for me now. I love the Lord. <laughs> and yes, mm-hmm. my name is Sherelle. So then they just, you know, people start calling me Miss Lady. So it was like, Sherelle, Miss Lady. Let me, since I'm trying to capture the attention of the, you know, people out here who don't believe and, you know, they see it as, oh, you have to have Sherelle Gray because you're a gospel artist. And it's like, um, I can be Shabron Miss Lady and still give God the praise at the same time. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like, okay, you got a little Miss Lady in you. So I said, okay, well, Shabron Miss Lady. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how I can praise him just as much as you can praise him. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I can go into it a whole sermon with this one, but you know, I don't have, we don't have enough time for my sermon. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much how I got the name Miss Lady, because they, you know, everybody called me Miss Lady, Miss Lady. So I just said, well, Sharon Miss Lady. Well, so what words of encouragement would you have for someone out there tonight? Someone that's, you know, either trying to get into um, the ministry, the industry, you know, they're trying to get their songs out there and they may not know what to do, um, you know, how to do it. Um, what words of encouragement would you give to that person tonight? I would just tell them, do not give up. If this is your dream and it's something that you really want to do and you believe in it, don't give up. Don't let no one discourage you and, you know, just keep your eyes open because you may run into a place where you might, you know, connect with someone that may discourage you and just, you know, remain focused and it will happen. You just have to believe. That's right. You do have to believe. You got to believe. And don't and give up. All, all of the, believe and don't give up. That is exactly right. And know that you can start over no matter what the circumstances are. I was talking to someone else today about that and they were saying they were about to give up, they were about to quit, and after speaking with me, he just said, now I know that I just, I can't give up, but there's also an opportunity for me to start over, so don't don't forget that. So where can people find you um, for booking? Um, um, You can reach me at the phone number, if you guys are ready. It's 410-212-3700. And you can reach me by email. That's Sherelle Gray, the number 82 at gmail.com. And do you have a website as well? Well, I don't have the website like right now, but that's a working process. I mean, okay. getting this music out and letting everybody hear it and, you know. I said, I got to get my music out first, but, you know, the Uh website is coming soon, so. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, Miss Sherelle, Miss Lady, it was a pleasure for me to um, get a chance to meet you, and I can't wait to meet you in person. Hopefully, we can get you onto the Red Room because I'm excited to have some fun with you. I know that we will have a ball. I know that we will have a ball. Yes, we will Um, have a ball. (laughs) Yes, so please get get connected with Jerry. Definitely want to see you there. Um, but I do have one more question for you before I let you go, Miss Sherelle, Miss Lady. Um, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to just say it. I'm going to say, can you feel the power? And you were going to say with all of that personality and 
enthusiasm. I feel the power, okay? All okay. right. Mr. I, I keep saying Miss first. I'm going to say Sherelle, Miss Lady. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? I can feel the power. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power A double XM. Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. That's how you say it, Shay Samuels. Can you feel the power? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Sherelle, we appreciate having you here. We're gonna have you back in the red. We're gonna have you here in the red room real soon. We gotta get Shay's schedule, find out what's going on. But we will be in Graysonville, Maryland, beginning of December. We'd like to have you come out there and be on the Lakeisha Moses show. Bring your awesome music. Entertain the folks. We have a live studio audience. So uh, we're putting that in place right now as we talk to management out there in Graysonville. All right. Sound good? Sounds good. Awesome. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much, Shay, for hosting the show. And Miss Lady, we'll be meeting you real soon. And get you be part of Positive Power. All right. Sound good? Sound good. Sounds great. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in Monday Night Triple Podcast, beginning with Pep Talk with Rick, starting at 8 o'clock every Monday, 9 o'clock with the Lakeisha Moses Show, 10 o'clock with Shay Sammy's on Late Night with Jerry Woods Live Worldwide. All right, so don't forget, y'all, tune in Tuesday. Dr. V will be here starting at 8 o'clock tomorrow. She's back. She is back on Positive Power, so at 8 o'clock. And then 9 o'clock, we have, I believe we got Miss um, Miss Paula, Miss Paula Brian going to be here starting. I got to talk to her. I think she's starting at 9. Then 10 o'clock, we got Inspirational Treasure with Shalonda Wimp. All right, so tune in, y'all. We got another triple podcast, brand new cast on Tuesday night. All right, take care, everybody. Enjoy your night. Batman's out. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live, worldwide podcast. Hey, hey, hey. My name is Davis, and I'm from Haiti. But I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X.
I still feel it now. 33, you are so young, but you live your life. Please to God, you're the reason I know Him now. I, 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 I thought I would lose my
will bless your name. Bless your name, Father. Bless your name, Father.
already know who gets the glory. My faith was tested so tough, I almost lost my mind. Lost my mind. Cause I had keys to no house. Barely food for my mouth. How could you allow this to happen? People were laughing when my bills were stacking. Yes, oh, I couldn't even catch a ride. But I knew somebody fresher than new love. Cooler than true love. Sweet like sugar. When I needed a tune up, I shouted. With Jervis Love Worldwide and Paula G, the voice. What's up, Paula G, the voice? How you doing? Yeah, Paula don't want to talk. I know. Paula, what line are you on? <laughs> I never know what phone you calling me on. All right. I don't know what line she on. All right. We'll get back to Paula in a minute as soon as she let me know what number she's in. See, people be calling me. You got to you gotta listen to us on Spreaker Radio or, or Facebook Live. You can't call Batman because then he don't know what line his, his guests are on. All right. Stay tuned, y'all. We waiting on Paula G. Okay. There go Paula G right there. She coming on another line. Never seen that number before. All right, Paula G. What's going on? What's going on? How you doing? I'm on the same line every week, Batman. I'm fine. How are you? No, actually, it's saying something different today. It's a great neck. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Oh, I don't know what that is. Mm -mm, that's the same number. Okay. Same number, but anyway, how are you? What's Batman is good. It was a great day. Great day in Batman land in Charm City. How was your day? That's good. That's good. I, you know what? Every day is a beautiful day. Every day you wake up and get up is a wonderful, fabulous day. I, I uh, work from home today, so I got, got a lot accomplished. I got, got my case notes done and my files done. So it's a good day. Yeah, yeah. A good no day. complaints. In Paula no G's complaints. world. That's right. That's awesome. I'm, I'm very no excited um, for some of the things that's been um, happening for Positive Power and um, some of the connections and collaborations that's going on with us right now. And I know, um, you know, you've been really happy in the direction you've been. You want to share some, some good news with our yeah. listening audience? Yeah. Oh, yes. You know, we, I mean, you know, with WATC and TV 57, I have to give them a shout out for my journey with Paula G. It just continues, the show just is just continuing to grow. The audience is continuing to grow. You are, are continuing to support us. And we thank you all so much. We are preparing for our live taping in October as well as Next week, I'll be up in the D.C. area, July 26th, 27th, and 28th, taping uh, several episodes. How many episodes are we taping next week? Ooh, taping a few yeah. episodes. Yeah. We, 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 got, we, we got a few episodes. Yeah, we should be good. Between, so got, yeah, between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we should come out good. Yeah, so we've got a lot of um, guests that we will be interviewing, and I always enjoy being in the studio. It would be good to be back in the studio. You know, we've been recording some of the shows here in the Atlanta area, but uh, I'll be back in studio next week, so I'm excited about that, and I'm excited to meet my guests and have opportunity to speak with my guests. We've gotten some new underwriters since our last um, since our last taping, uh, Creekside Dental, and we're appreciative of having them. I actually will be out there in a couple of weeks, so I'll be doing a, a live uh, Facebook Live at Creekside Dental, so y'all get a chance to see. Y'all have to see this 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 dental office. It is like you think you're walking in a spa. Everything is just so serene and peaceful, and they got the little massage chairs and the the massage blankets, and it just makes you feel comfortable because you know a lot of us don't like to go to the dentist. We don't like to go to the dentist, but um, but they're just great people there. So I'm you know I'm appreciative of them. My coffee shop is back on board with us, so we're happy to have my coffee shop back. Also, um, shout out to Dr. Paul and Marcia Kelly, just been a constant support, you know, throughout this whole entire journey. And I'm so appreciative um, of, of them, just wonderful, wonderful people of God. And also Clark Garrison right here in, in the Atlanta area with Survival Radio Network and Clicks Photography, just the support has just been phenomenal. You know, it just speaks to when you're doing what what God has gifted you to do, and he starts opening those doors. That's your confirmation, y'all. That's your confirmation that you're walking in the right path and, and moving in the right direction and do, doing what it is that he's called you to do. So um, I'm excited about coming to the Bat Cave next weekend. That's right. See all my guests, meet, meet some new guests. That's right. <laughs> and um, Brandon as well, i got to give him a shout-out. L-U-S-U Design. Lusu. Design. Lusu. Yeah, he'd be in, he, he's like a standard. Brandon is like a standard interview. Every time I come over, I have, I have to have a conversation with Brandon because he is just so deep. And a lot, a lot of what he says is so profound. So I told him every time I come to town, if he's around, you know, we're going to sit down and, and have a conversation yeah, we gotta get him in As on well. Sunday then. Oh, yeah, we get him in huh? on Sunday. Try yeah. to get him in on Sunday, so we're gonna try to load up on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Gotta fly out uh, on Sunday night, but um, it's just been an amazing journey. It's been a wonderful journey, and I just have to give you all the the, the kudos and and the thanks and the appreciation for this journey, for your support, for seeing the vision. Positive Power 21, Music Vision Television, all of it. You know, God has just put so much inside of you, and you are a prime example of of, of someone when they're utilizing their gifts, what, you know, what could happen when you are utilizing 
your guests. You all have heard me say this before, that Miles Monroe has said the richest place on the planet is the cemetery because so many people go to their graves having not utilized their gifts. Jerry mm-hmm. Worth Live Worldwide, a.k.a. Batman, is utilizing his gifts, ladies and gentlemen, and it is blessing millions, millions of people with all the programs. I mean, the TV, the radio programming, the documentaries, the, 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 the live remotes, the special programming, all of it is just blessing so many people because, you know, you, you, you put out so much content and a lot, and there's so much variety that it reaches the ears of, of all different people. You know, one mm-hmm. show, people may not be able to connect with one show, but they'll be able to connect with another show, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, they may not be um, able to connect with maybe a, a documentary, but they're able to, com- to connect with a live remote, you know, something that's said or seen at a live remote. So um, shout out to you, Batman, for, you, for all that G. you do for yeah. so many people. Yeah, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I was sitting there writing down um, all my skills. I think I sent it to you. <laughs> and it, it actually scared me. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, you know, thinking you know when i went to engineering school you know of course it was a blessing to get into a high school and, and of course steven steven turner was my classmate um i don't know how he utilized mm-hmm. his skills but steven has a very intelligent mind very detailed and of course you know he he likes to uh, challenge people's minds and their actions and he's always been that way and that school taught us to be that way how to how to think outside the box and how to challenge people to be better yeah. than than what they are and I always try to outdo myself. Every, I'm not even trying to challenge nobody out there. Nobody. That, I, you know, matter of fact, I'm hoping that there's someone out there that I can say, oh, wow, I want to I want to I wanna try that, too. You know, um, mm-hmm. I, I think God has um, uh, built a lot of us really, really different. But he built us for a purpose, you know, and people shouldn't just look at and marveling what someone else is doing. That, that, is, that gift is for you, too, you know. We just don't yeah. understand because we've yeah. been so busy entertaining the Joneses theory for so long that we don't understand that that, that mm-hmm. person's blessing is also your blessing, too, because you are a child of God, just like they are. Yeah. But sometimes because right. it's funny because um, my, my neighbors and I, we are really, really close, um, my neighbors, and they'll tell you straight up what, what is theirs is yours, you know, just like that. You know, like I was just talking to my neighbor yeah. today and just like him, mean, he felt so bad. We, we just went down. He said, you know what? Um, my son would invite you guys to the club, the clubs, some club seats with the Orioles. Like, you know, you'd be right in there with the with the big wheels eating food and, you know, enjoying the game mm-hmm. inside. You don't have to worry about being outside. I was like, wow, really? Yeah, I'm going to take you and your wife. You know, how often do you guys want to go? Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of stuff. You know, so you really appreciate right. those kind of blessings. I mean, it could be that's, that's something real small to someone else, but that's 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 the that's the world of sports. You know, that's like a you know, mm-hmm. that's our our city team, you know. So we're looking forward to yeah. to doing that and hanging out with him and his wife, you know, fellowship and and, and and meeting other people and you know, see who else you can, you know, you can collaborate with. But um God has been really good. I just looked at that as a as a gift because I wasn't even thinking about going to an Orioles game, today, especially when the temperatures being up in the nineties. And hearing my neighbor say, "Hey, we're gonna be inside watching the game." I said, "Wow, that's God." <laughs> you know, yeah, you know that is a blessing indeed. Be be inside, cool, Chilling. fellowship, and watching the game. That's, that's right. all right. That's right. That's gonna be that's nice. That's all right. And I, yeah, but it, you know, it, it all it just speaks to those open doors and and how you know we we've got to focus on what it is that God has put inside of us for us. And I think sometimes we get distracted. We start comparing. I was listening to this sermon uh, yes, last night, yesterday, by um, Pastor Ricky Temple, and he was talking about how, you know, sometimes we're so, we get so distracted by comparing ourselves to others that we mm-hmm. don't focus on what it is. That, that that's within us and that's what right. it is that's within us that we have to nurture so that can grow, you know, and, and we hear it all the time. What's for that's you, right. what is for you, what God has for you is for you. We hear that so often, but we really have to allow it to marinate in our spirit and, and, and know that, 
That, right. you know, what he, what he has for us is for us and it's okay. And it's not the same that somebody else is going to have. So, you know, we can't be tripping about what they have and what we don't have mm-hmm. and how much farther along they are than we are. You got to stay in your lane, focus on what it is that, that you do um, because you are especially equipped to do that mm-hmm. thing that God has placed inside That's of you. Right. So. Be proud of your brothers and sisters for stepping outside the box. I mean, we've yeah. got enough, enough thugs and, yep. and criminals out here. They'd be happy for someone doing something positive that's lifting up our people. I mean, and one of my, I mean, my main goals right now is we, we're going after the youth. I mean, I already announced earlier today mm-hmm. that we're going to be uh, working on a, a talent showcase for the young people because, you know, everyone of different ages can be part of that because, you know, we, we are a platform mm-hmm. that in, engage entertainment on, on a gospel and Christian level. So we're going to, you know, all right. the invitation is open to any age, but we're just so excited about that because this venue is supposed to be really, really nice. And they just mm-hmm. totally turned the keys over to positive power, which was like incredible. I mean, they did everything over the phone. They, they, they uh, gave us the date, the time for auditions. When we're going to have a show, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to get the kids to design mm-hmm. the flyers. We're going to be, we also, it was just incredible. All that happened like in 15 minutes. I was like, wow, that's, that's God. That's God yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Glory, so when gonna... you, when you're doing, like you said, when you're doing what he's called you, you, you to do and you're focused on doing that, mm. you know, I'm, and I'm learning that on this journey, you know, I'm learning that on, on this journey of, of staying focused of, on the opportunities, you know, that he's placed before you and staying focused on those opportunities and and honing your craft working on your craft that's right. practice 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 work on it learn practice. research that's right <laughs> research read and you know another thing that was so incredible today too um, I always think about what Wayne Dwyer said um, before his passing he said God didn't put you here to, to, to do what you do alone he you know he, he put all these other brothers and mm-hmm. these beautiful people out here to, to collaborate with you and help you because the bottom line is we're giving him all the glory when we when we become successful and and we receive our accomplishments uh it's all about him and 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 the thing about it was was so funny today i didn't put no efforts in today trying to uh push another another television um, opportunity another contract and then someone contacted me they said guess what i got your deal For the Lakeisha Mosey mm-hmm. show, you know, for uh, the for the documentary is going to be airing on a on a cable network, and I was like, "What?" And that's in the in the area where we're doing business, you know, which was so incredible. So that was another yeah. thing I didn't have to worry about, and I was like, "Get out of here!" Yeah. And shout out, shout out to Lakeisha. Lakeisha has just, you know, the, the doors. Like I said, when the doors open, she's a prime example. When you when you are walking through those doors that he opens, and 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 you're doing what. But he's called you to do when yes. he has opened that particular door for you. And when you walk through, oh, my gosh, my sister, I'm so proud of her. She is uh-huh. just blown up. <laughs> I'll never forget. And I know we got one more few oh, seconds. Yeah. We got a few seconds because I know Tim and ready for our interview. I just never forget that yes. day when she came here for your interview. And I forgot that Dr. Dixon yes. said she was coming. So when I opened the door, I was like, what is this news anchor woman doing at my door? And I'm looking, I'm like, I'm looking for cameras or something. She came in so prepared. I was like, right. I forgot that we was doing that. You know, I just, you know, this is completely wild. Right. Me. You know, right. That was a real deep first impression of someone that's serious about what they're doing. She came in looking like an author, looking like she was ready for TV. Yes, she you did. Know? So I was she like, was focused. Yes. Yes. So, and look at it now. Yeah. It just a few months yeah, later. Hey. I mean, how long ago was that when we when we first met? Was that November? A, a year, a little over a year. No, yeah. it was. It was. Well, maybe it was November. Maybe it was November. And look at it now. Maybe uh, it, I want to say it was March, but maybe it was November. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I think it was really nice weather. I mean, now she she has a a very very nice polished radio show, and and now her yeah. television production. I mean, one time, just remember, she was roaming the streets of Baltimore with me <laughs> doing co- media coverage, and now yeah. she has her own platform. And, and then we actually building a set for her um, as we speak, so we can start uh, keeping keeping up with the episode. But wow. well, look, Batman got shut down. Uh-huh. We can talk about Lakeisha all night. Time to bring Ms. Timberland on. I just want to say hello to her because I see her, this beautiful woman on social media all the time. And and uh, I'm going to be in Arkansas. I don't know how far that is from Tennessee, but I hope I have an opportunity to meet her one day. 
And hello, Timlin, how are you? Welcome to Positive Power. I am doing great. Hello, hello, Jerry, uh, the Batman. I finally <laughs> get to speak with you. That's right. I'm excited. And hello, Miss Lovely Paula G. Greetings, my sister. How are you? I am blessed and happy tonight. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So. Sorry, it went over a little bit over your time, but we, you know, me and Paula, we, you know, we talk every day. Believe it or not, <laughs> but you wouldn't think so. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoy what I heard. So you yeah, guys are right in line with uh, some of my thinking and thoughts. So it, it was great to listen to you guys. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what you got to say. So Batman's on me. So I'm, enjoy, I'm, I'm going to enjoy the show. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to Late Night Radio with Jerry Voice Live and Paula G right here on Positive Power 21. I'm so excited to have this young lady with us. This evening, she's the owner and CEO of Tag Entertainment Group. She has over eight years of experience working in the roles of management and branding, marketing, public relations, and consulting. And she also has a passion in a few other areas which she is going to share with us. So we welcome to Late Night Radio with Jerry Royce Live and Paula G. Timbalyn Atkins. How are you? I'm so glad that you're with us. <laughs> Thank you. I am super excited tonight. Thank you, guys. Yes. Yeah. So share with us a bit. You have a passion for guiding the careers of independent artists. So share with us a bit as to how you go about doing that. Okay. Um, well, um, actually as far as um, pertaining to uh, independent artists, um, that passion came about. I think it's been there for, uh, wow, I I could say really over the eight years, um, you know, that I've had my company and I've been in the area of uh, entertainment. Um, But I guess you could say it started out um, a very long time before that when I got introduced to the area of just traveling around with um, with my sister and support supporting her in a role where she was in a group and it was an independent gospel group. And I had the opportunity to travel around and and support them. And um, I came to see that there were just so many talented uh, independent artists out there. And I saw some of the struggles and some of the things that, you know, they went through to get that support and recognition and so forth. And so um, I just, at that moment, at that time, uh, being in that, that circle um, you know, my, my heart went out to them and, um, me just being the type of person that I want, that I am, uh, wanting to support and, and to be be there to help others, um, with them having so much talent, you know, um, it was just natural for me to, um, you know, to grasp on, on as time went on and I was put in more, uh, positions to support, to want to do that for the independent artists. Wow. Wow. That is, that is. Blessing, and I know they have been and continue to be blessed by you assisting them on this journey. And you know, you and I both know on this journey, you you can run into people who can take advantage of you. You know, and and you're you're working hard, you're passionate about what you do, and it becomes discouraging sometimes. So you know, it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to have someone that can help you to grow that that gift or grow that talent, you know, while you're on this journey of doing what it is that, you know, that, that one has been called to do. So you, you've you had a lot of different roles, worked in a lot of different roles of branding, um, marketing, public relations, consulting. How have you seen all of that change over the years, especially with the changes in technology and social media? How have you seen that change and how have you um, needed to make adjustments in order to kind of keep up? up with the (laughs) progress as they say (laughs) right um you know the biggest the biggest change of course has been social media um uh that's been a a big plus it's been a big plus Uh, a lot of um you know from the beginning you had a lot of um you know you had a lot of traveling and you had a lot of things you had to do on your own to connect uh to the masses Mm-hmm. You know, so it was um, a much harder journey 
of course, then what we see now with social media, and you're able to connect with just what a click, you know, a click yeah. here, a click there, and and look, I'm connected to the world. So right. <laughs> things have changed. Yeah, so absolutely, things have changed to make it a lot easier uh, and more accessible to the masses. However, um, we still have to continue to um, embrace some of those old ways of doing things uh, with, uh, you know, having an artist or even with your business of getting out there, of connecting and, um, you know, showing the world and not just with, you know, radio is definitely a great plus, but, Mm -hmm. you know, getting out there and still traveling and putting yourself out there um, is still a major part. It's not just being dependent on all of social media. But, you know, we, we, you know, switch and we, we embrace and we add too. So I just say, I look at social media and me and my role as, you know, with PR and marketing Mm -hmm. that, that, that is just a, you know, a plus to add on to what I already do, which is doing that one-on-one and that, that, you know, that networking and relationship building that way. So Mm -hmm. I've had to change in those ways. And they, like I said, it's been a plus, but we can always go back to our grassroots <laughs> of yeah. getting out there and touching and, and being accessible and letting people see your face and, you know, just having that human connection when I'm working on someone's behalf. Right. Right. So is there, is there a, a, a big difference or how do you navigate, you know, perhaps working with someone who has grown up in all this technology versus those of us who have not? <laughs> And right. They, maybe <laughs> aren't quite as savvy, you know, in in the in the social media. So how do you how do you how do you make that adjustment with them, or how do you how do you navigate that, assisting them well, on that journey? If they have, if they at this point they haven't been as, are a little bit older and not used to the modern technology. Mm-hmm. Or, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, um, basically, you know, we were there as a team, you know, to help one another. So in the areas where an artist or a business, someone who owns a business, a small business, may not be, like you said, um, as savvy with today's technology and, and, and things of that sort, it is, you know, my, my position in assisting them to assist them, but also to inform them or to guide them that it doesn't matter your age, you still need to be informed and be, you know, have that knowledge of how things work. You don't have to be the best right. at it. You don't mm-hmm. have to, you know, become an expert, but you have to know a little bit about it. But when you have a team and you're working together, you know, that's where it comes in where me with my knowledge or someone else on the team with their knowledge steps in to support. So it's it's always when you when you have that team and you have those people there too that, you know, we all support each other, it makes it a lot easier. Show show that person how it is a benefit, but, you know, the way that they've been doing also come in with the younger generation Mm -hmm. and let them see how they've had a longevity or or how things have been in the past and see how putting those together, it makes them more successful. Right, right. Wow. So when, you know, an artist is on the verge of uh, embarking on their career, what are like, let's say, the top two or three tips that you would give them if they were serious about what it is that they're doing. If this is a journey that they're moving forward on and and, and they're serious about what they're doing, what should they know coming out of the gate? Or what should they be prepared to do coming out of the gate? Well, my recommendation and and what I tell um, most um, artists and clients I work with is that um, there's important things. There's preparation, Mm -hmm. there's planning, timing, and budget building. Ooh. So those are some major, (laughs) right. (laughs) Those are some major areas to me because you Mm -hmm. definitely need preparation. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's not a, there's no rush. You know, there's no uh, time limit on this. You know, God gave it to you. He wants you to be prepared. He wants you to bring your best self forward when you're going out there to represent him, yourself, your ministry, your your talent, 
what he's blessed you with. He wants you to be very prepared about uh, with that. He wants you to have, when I say planning, he wants you to sit down, <laughs> make those that checklist, and make sure that everything that you do, you're planning what you do. You're not just rushing out there with no plan whatsoever. And and preparation and planning goes together, of course. And then with timing, we can prepare ourselves. But we, you know, and, and the artists can prepare themselves, but you want to make sure that that timing is right. So if you're out there and the timing is not right and you're trying to release all these talents that God has blessed you with, if the, ta- if the timing is not right, you can mess up some things along your destiny journey that was not meant for you, not meant to be, you know, for you to step into that, that area at that time. Not to say that you won't ever be able to, um, you utilize those talents that you have, but it's in that timing, making sure that what you're doing falls in line with that destiny journey and those things that got those doors out is open for you. And then, of course, lastly, I say this, the budget building. Budget building means that you have looked at every area that it takes to get your project out, to get your single out, to get yourself out. And you 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 take a checklist, you've researched and you saw the, you know, what those prices are, what is it going to take? What level am I really trying to, to achieve with my ministry and, and my career? So you want to make sure you have that budget put together. You want to make sure that you're starting to gather and save and do whatever it is that you need to do in order to have that budget ready. So that when you step out there with your preparation, planning and timing, you're on point. It makes it so much better for our, especially if, you don't have um, a representation at that time. But then if you did have all, all that together and you had representation, it makes it all the, <laughs> it makes it all the, the, you know, the best for you and for the team that you'll be working with. And those are really excellent tips because I, you know, believe that there are so many that get so excited about utilizing their gifts and, and stepping mm-hmm. out you know, on the on the horizon, and and you know, I'm finally have this opportunity to lose, use my gift, and I'm I'm just going to go out and I'm going to minister, and they do so without preparing, or planning, or or, or discerning that timing, and and the budget is huge. That that is huge. You know, looking at the budget because you know all of this this costs a couple. Of <laughs> right, right. A couple of dollars. <laughs> so you know, it's so it's so crucial to really, you know, they, the the Bible tells us that patience is a virtue, and it's so crucial to be patient and to be still and be prayerful about these things before, you know, stepping out and and, and embarking on them. So not only do you have experience and have worked in, um. PR, you've done PR work, but you've also worked in, you have a background in small, um, small businesses as well as real estate. So how does all that tie in? Or was that a, was that a previous lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, I can say this. I continue to uh, be a multiple business owner. So mm-hmm. um, the real estate part of it is um, property management, which mm-hmm. uh, still allows me to be um, very helpful in my role between um, an investor slash landlord and his tenants. So I have the opportunity to assist in that area, and um, and it goes along with what I do. I, I, I love to support. You know, um, I love to see things work and and work for the betterment of everybody. So um, being in in that area of real estate. Um, what just came easy for me. Um, and I knew that, and I had that before I really and truly was all the way into um, the entertainment area. So right. that was just a love that I had for, for real estate. And, and really and truly, I started out wanting to be a realtor. Uh, you know, the market changed at the time. And I decided, you know, um, let me just let me just be that liaison between, uh, you know, an investor and, and who's going to be in their home. And that way I can, you know, truly be that, that middle person to make things work for everybody. Mm-hmm. And so I still do that. I love it. Um, you know, time management is everything when you own multiple <laughs> businesses and doing multiple things. So it helps yeah. in the sense, right. So it helps in the sense that 
what I do with the entertainment side and what I do as a property management owner is all of this with the way that technology is allows me to be remote unless I have to physically be there, which I can. Unless it's pretty much an emergency, I can plan that out. So mm-hmm. it it helps me, right, so it helps me with my time management. It helps me to pass it along to my artists because I'm juggling other things. And mm-hmm. I can help them as far as um, organizing and having their life in order. So not just am I there, you know, to support in their career, but it's in, you know, it tends to fall into that thin line of assisting with many facets of their life as well, because it all yeah. comes together as one. And where there's a lacking somewhere, it's going to be a lack somewhere else, a distraction. So we play where many hats. And, right. um, you know, just right. So having that that particular business and just having a background in business marketing, um, you know, it it helps with everything that I do. So I could say everything that I've done in the past has brought me to where I'm now. And I just utilize all those skills uh, to help me be successful when I'm assisting in the artists and clients out here. Right. And and on top of all that, you still have a life, you know, a yes. woman in America. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Still have a life and and deal with, you know, a lot of the the same challenges that we all you know deal with and that and you know when I I hear you talk about what it is that you do I can hear the excitement in your voice and it it's so it is exciting to be able to be in a position to help people to nurture their gifts you know our our motto on my journey with Pology is juggling the journey of life while walking in the gifts God has given you. And I always enjoy yes. when, you know, we have guests such as yourself who, you know, you sh- you're sharing these, these are the gifts that God has given me. These are how I'm using them. And via time management, I'm juggling this journey called life while I'm walking in my purpose and I'm walking in my gifts. And that is so encouraging to people out there who are listening, you know, who are who maybe haven't kind of quite figured out how to make it all work. You you just help somebody tonight. You help somebody tonight. Get up off that sofa. And well, say, I know, pray. I pray I that. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> I pray that. <laughs> I yes. can do this. Yes, I can do this. So tell us a bit about the independent connection. I like that. Independent connection. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the independent connection uh, came about with me tagging myself as that PR diva. <laughs> and um <laughs> yeah, like that PR diva. <laughs> a little bit of my personality in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> a little bit of <laughs> right. And so um I have a business partner uh and, and a client, uh Tony D on the radio. Mm-hmm. And um and he, he came up with this idea, you know, you say you're that PR diva, you love doing what you're doing and so forth, you know. Um, why don't you just to start, um, uh, you already have these synergy relationships with, with some of these artists out here who aren't yours. You support them. You know, you're loving what you're doing. Why don't you just um, do something on another level where you can, you know, feature them? And I'm like, mm. yes, independent <laughs> connection. That's it. I am, I am connecting these independent artists out here. And mm. um, it just, we, we just talked about it. It's evolved since last year. I I love it. Um, I never really saw myself as that person that would mm-hmm. actually be on the radio and <laughs> speaking, wow. uh, really? you know, because I've always been behind the scenes. Absolutely. I've been just the one behind the scenes, of course, mm-hmm. uh, pushing the artists and so forth. And, um, you know, it really helped. He helped me mm-hmm. with the challenging me to go ahead, you can do this. And that nervousness that, you know, if you haven't been behind the, the mic. <laughs> Um, oh yeah. So <laughs> yes, and you have so many people listening. It's like okay. So um, I I really did um, you know step back and think about all the th- things that I that I did, all the roles I have, and um, what do I do when I'm up here supporting these artists? I'm I'm actually watching them. Yeah. So I, I I thought okay, so they don't have to come to me. Don't have to do anything. I'm just watching these independent artists out here. I'm not just watching and and listening for your talent, 
but I'm seeing what are the other things that you are doing out here in the community? What are you doing with your ministry? What are you doing with all the gifts that God has blessed, has blessed you with? And that's how I choose my featured artists. And so um, I, I, I listen to the music, of course, but I, mm-hmm. I do, I watch them. I watch their pages. I watch what they do. And mm-hmm. that's how I come about, you know, choosing who the particular um, featured artist is. And so it's mm-hmm. given them, you know, free promotion on a lot of different um, platforms that, you know, they wouldn't have. And I'm happy to do that. I really am. I'm happy to do that because it's so much great talent out here. And uh, with the independent artists or emerging artists, whichever you want to call them, I just say they are amazing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I I am, I'm happy because I get to um, be around them. I get to watch them. I get to enjoy you know, the gifts that they've been blessed with. And so it's it's really my pleasure to watch them and to want to give them recognition for what they're doing out here for the kingdom. And so they are, as I say, ripping the kingdom with excellence. So when I choose someone, that's exactly what I see in them. It's, a, it's, a, it's all the way around. It's not just how good they sound singing. And so yeah. that's that's what Independent Connection is. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, it, and it's so important when you, you were saying you, you watch them and you watch their social media and you watch what they do. That is, that is really important in this, in this business, you know, your brand, what it is that you put out there, how you um, project yourself, how you, how, how you minister, all of that is important. And, you know, sometimes we, we just have to be mindful of that, you know, of, 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 you know, what it is that we are portraying because we're all, you know, representing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, so, um, you know, when you were talking, and I'm I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, is there an artist that's sitting out there that's saying, okay, I wonder, she's watching, what what is it that she's looking for? What is it that I need to do to catch her eye? What would you say to that? Just continue to be you. Continue mm. to to represent on the level that that God has shown you. He wants you to to be out mm. here representing Him. I can't really say, like I said, it's a mm. it's not just about your talent. It right. has to be from the heart what you do out here in the community. It has to be out here, and it has to be in your heart what you do for others. Um, that's that's your ministry when you're out here showing how you are repping the kingdom because you know yeah. we're we're children of God. He's saying mm-hmm. that what you do is to glorify him. I'm not I'm not looking at an artist because no one's perfect, but let me see what extra are you doing outside of singing mm-hmm. to to help build the kingdom and to reach others. And so yeah. um that's what I'm saying. You naturally is going to attract me to you. So what mm-hmm. you do naturally and from your heart is gonna attract me to you. So there's not anything really that I could say do, but continue to do you as you see that that God sees fit for you to do and what you see as kingdom building, because it's Mm -hmm. only through that natural you that I'm going to get the real you. (laughs) So um, that's 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 what I I would say. That authentic you. Yes. It's only through the natural you that you'll get the real. I like that. That works. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> so yes, Cher, yes. You know, we have a f- couple minutes left. So uh, sh- if there's anything else that you want to share with the audience or uh, leave the audience with or encourage the audience, and I want you to make sure that you share your social media website and uh, share with us how we can stay connected. Okay, absolutely. Um, I, I just want to encourage uh, um any artists out there to um, instill what I consider big faith and big faith is just believing wholeheartedly in God and trusting him. You know, there'll be times where we, we waver, but ultimately you want to fall back on, do I really trust in his word? So you want to have that big faith as you go through this destiny journey of yours, Um, have focus in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. You guys touched on a 
practice, 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 hum your, mm-hmm. your talents and gifts every day, every day, not just sometime, mm-hmm. but every day and p- prepare yourself. If you're preparing yourself for God to bless and open the doors for you, once mm-hmm. he does that, if you're not prepared, that opportunity is going to pass you. So what you need to do is be in your lane, preparing yourself, because it could, even with us, with business owners, whoever it may be, if we're yeah. preparing ourselves and we're staying focused on what he's called us to do and, and humming our gifts and talents, you could wake up the next morning or the next minute you're going through life and the door has been open and you have that opportunity right there, that one opportunity to get in and to do you and to, to you know, you know, get that manifested in what you've been preparing yourself for. So please stay prepared. Please keep that big faith. Um, When you're out here, true network, and I want to just say this real quick, true network artists out here is not going to an event and just passing the card out or just saying hello. True network is you're connecting with someone. You are not leaving it just there at the, the event or wherever the the networking event was, but you are actually following up with them. You're building a true relationship, whether it's with someone that you want as your management, or if it is just someone that you want to collab with, you want to do that true connection. You want to have that, that real relationship where it can evolve into, uh, you know, where you guys are helping each other out. So it's very important that you learn truly what that, that when they say come here and network, it's that's true network. It's not just passing your car. So it is very important that you build relationships and good relationships and be real in your relationships. Good relationships. Keyword, good relationships. <laughs> yes, good relationships. And as you're preparing, one last thing I want to leave you with, the audience yeah. with, whoever's listening, when you're preparing and you're planning, a great scripture that I love is Proverbs 16 and 3. It says, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Utilize that, Proverbs 16.3, as you are preparing and planning to go out here and touch the masses uh, to represent the kingdom. And um, I'm telling you, it does great works for your soul and your spirit by, by feeding on this scripture right there. It helps me. Amen. Amen. Timberland Atkins, thank you so much for joining us on Late Night Radio with Jerry Voice Live and Paula G. You have truly been a blessing. It's been a wonderful conversation. And I look forward to seeing what God has for you in the future. Thank you. And just thank you so much for joining us. And until we meet again, my sister, embrace your journey. And thank you thank so you. much. I'm, I'm at Tag Entertainment Group. I'm sorry, on Facebook oh, yes. and on, on Instagram, Tag Entertainment Group and on Twitter. And if they want to reach out, can they email you? Where can they email you at? Tag Entertainment Group at gmail dot com. Okay. <laughs> you. You thank go, you, Lisa. thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. And make sure you all stay connected. Tag Entertainment Group. Stay connected with this lady. She is just wonderful. She's a blessing. And for those of you who are independent artists and you're and you're looking for someone to work with you and work with you on this journey, reach out. Timon Atkins Tag Entertainment Group. You heard it right here on Late Night Radio with Jerry Voice Live and Paula G. We're going to take a break. And when we come back on the flip side, it will be time for the Christian Party Line. And my sisters are in queue this evening, and they are waiting to bless you. Shay Sams, I believe, is in queue this evening. Shay Samuels. Why do I keep calling her Shay Sams? I know it's Shay Samuels. Shay Samuels. Look Keisha, I believe, is in queue. We've got a special guest this evening as well that will be joining them. And uh, I don't know, I might hang around a little bit so I can stay awake. We'll see. I don't know. (laughs) But anyway, thank you all so much for joining us. And, you know, just make sure you check us out on all uh, streams, iHeartRadio, Spreaker Radio. Don't forget My Journey with Paula G. Thursdays, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and Sundays, 8 a.m. A.M. Eastern Standard Time on WATC2 TV. You can also catch it on Hulu, Roku, Apple TV, Truly Google Play, Genico 
TV, all of those also on mdtv-21.com. You can go there and see all of the episodes of my journey with Paul G, along with Lakeisha's show, Shay in the Red Room. I mean, there are so many things going on right now with Positive Power 21. It is amazing. So you all sit back, relax. We're going to take a break. I believe we're going to listen to a little music, and then we will be back on the flip side with the Christian Party Line with your host this evening or this morning, (laughs) Shay Samuels. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I live in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Royce Live, worldwide. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live, worldwide podcast. What's up, Shay Samuels? What's going on? How are you? <laughs> that Did man. I... Good morning. Good morning, Desky. <laughs> it's, it's late. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. oh, yeah, I can hear you. Good morning. I think you're just happy to hear my voice on a Friday morning. Yeah, yeah. Well, Saturday morning. It's Saturday now. I was surprised. I, I I thought you were still in studio all night. You know, with under the fence, <laughs> under, beyond the fence. No, I actually, I was finished. I was finished pretty early today. My voice is out, but you know, with everybody else out, um, I figured I would go ahead and fill in the gap uh, while while everybody else was out. So that's what those co-producers do. That's right. It look like um, look like the girls in the house ready to do their thing. And let me, I need to switch you guys over and. Um, Show y'all stuff on social media. Let me switch it over. There we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. All right. Shay, so you working on a new project? Real quick, I'm going to just chat with you real quick before the girls come in and talk to you. You see so a new no project? No problem. No problem. I am. So um, I've been working on the project for a while, but I did two new songs today that um, really they wanted the songs like heavy on my heart a while ago. And my producer just sent Marcus Boyd, you know, Marcus Boyd, shout out to Marcus yeah, Boyd, yeah. super producer. Um, he produced pretty much half of the album at wow. this point. Um, but he sends beats all the time. And so two of the, really four of the beats, but two of the beats I grabbed a hold of and recorded them today. So I'm excited about that and for you guys to hear the new music. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to send you my beat because I have a, Batman got a song. I'm, 
I need somebody to I, sing on you it. You keep telling me, but when I was in studio there, you had the song, you didn't play it. We had time. And then you supposed to send me the song, you didn't play it. All right, I'm gonna send it to you. You didn't send it. See what you could do with it, and then I can I could do my thing because my because my cousin he's in South <laughs> Africa, and he's been hitting me up every week saying when are you gonna send the track so he can master it. You know, cause that's what he he does. He uh you know he does uh he's he does stuff in for, for New York. But he uh, his studios uh-huh. in, in Johannesburg, so uh, you know that's how we've been connecting lately. All right, so Batman got okay. me. That's right, Paula. Well, Batman. That's right. Batman got a song. I may not be able to perform it live because you know I don't remember nothing. <laughs> I can't remember nothing without notes. So I'm gonna have to do a video. Uh, you can't be up, you can't be up on stage with notes and notepad and whiteboard. That's what I told my brother when he told me he was gonna do spoken word with with, uh, with his notes in his hand. I said you you can't do that on TV. Especially when you got two other people going, <laughs> going to be going to be doing the same thing, and, and they're going to memorize it. So he said, "You're right." <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. We looking so we we just so excited, you know. But this weekend we got you know the Keisha Mosey show uh, on the set. Um, everybody's getting ready. You know, it's going it's going to be challenging because it's going to be a very very hot day. Um, of course, we're going to be by the water, so it should feel some good. But you know, it's going to be some challenges. But we're looking forward to it. Batman is excited. Yeah, I'm excited for you guys. Shout out to Lakeisha Mosley um, doing big things in Chestertown, Maryland. You guys are doing big things all over the place. News articles and shout out to Lakeisha. Yeah, and, and the breaking news was um, the documentary that she helped me with is going to air on their television network. And we're talking about trying to get the TV um, series on there. So we're talking about that. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love you. You say it it comes to pass that's right Batman don't play you know you know Batman I don't I'm, I'm not gonna throw who my minister is out there because he's not alive right now and Paul don't know who it is but he tells you all the time about the power within you know it's like you you know you have to speak mm-hmm. this stuff to yourself you can't and you got to watch it who you talk to about stuff you can speak it but you gotta be careful who you yes. speak it to I mean sometimes it could be people as closest to you as a as a as a spouse uh you know they going to have some doubt. And I remember one time, and I'm going to say this real quick. I remember Wayne Dwy- Dwyer said this one time, and this was before his passing. And, and this is beyond about the collaborating with people, you know, people with gifts that supposedly compliment your gifts and they're here for you and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, people got to remember sometime the people closest to you really don't want to see you sometime catapult because then they feel like, oh, my God, you won't be there for me when I need to talk to you or yeah. hold your hand or, yeah. you know, you know, whatever. And so they can speak, they can think it right out of existence <laughs> or they won't, they won't give you no, um, uh, what you're looking for back. And then it kind of kills the vision a little bit. Cause you walk away feeling, mm-hmm. Oh wow. Maybe I shouldn't do that. And then it, you know, yeah. it don't happen. Obligated. Yep. So I'm, I'm like, Real crap. And and then, and then one time you think about it too, when you say when your spouse is not there for you, think that they're not giving you no support. But, you know, sometimes God put people in, in your, in your way sometime to push you sometime. You may be looking at it as a negative, but it's really a positive. <laughs> it's like, because it's supposed right. that spouse is jumping in, in the bandwagon with you, but they changing everything all around all the time. And you find yourself fighting with them because they trying to change your, your vision, you know? Mm. Cause I know wifey poop would definitely change my stuff around for a fact. <laughs> Cause she's to change my homework. <laughs> she's to change. That's the whole way to make. Well, you know, when I was in the studio today, it was it's ironic like you said it. When I was in the studio today, the engineer was talking about his wife being incorporated into um, the studio, and he's now bringing his two sons in. And so while we were there, he didn't realize that they had changed a lot of his settings. Ooh. So we started recording. <laughs> we started recording, and he was, you know, he. He was getting frustrated, but I told him, I mean, when you, when you're, when you're incorporating your family into what you do and how you do it, Paula G talks about this a lot. Shout out to Lady Wisdom and Timberland Atkins, who just got off of their late night show. Amen. But uh, Lady Wisdom talks about this too, about how, you know, when we're teaching our kids to be creative and we're putting them in a position to um, really walk out their purpose at such a young age, we cannot rebuke them at that time. Um, um, make them feel discouraged by telling them what they shouldn't be doing. And so Paula talked about this at the conference, and I think she's talking about a willow tree. Um, hopefully she'll chime in, but she's talking about a willow tree and how she would get thanked with the willow tree. 
hope I'm saying that right. But she wrote on the wall or something like that. So it was something that she kind of didn't do anymore. Maybe she knew someone that did it. But anyway, um, so he kept apologizing for it. And I would say, don't apologize for it because you're teaching them to do something. And the fact that they're trying to do it on their own, you know how many children you try to get to do something and they Mm -hmm. won't even get up, get out of bed or how lazy they might be just because they don't have the ambition and enthusiasm to to do it so so yeah so um i i don't know you just have to keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing and yeah. make like you said make sure that when you because they were they were at they were at odds um if he's listening they were at odds at one point why because he didn't feel that she was part a part of the vision mm-hmm. and he was and she wasn't allowing him he wasn't allowing her in the vision in his vision so yeah People can still yeah. and fill the vision. Well, not fill it, but people can talk against the vision, but they right. can also Dream work in your favor at the same yeah. time. Yeah, and sometimes you just have to be careful with you know where you bring them in, in the in the and be careful with the questions they ask. You know, it, it could be intriguing or it could be just concerns. So, um, before all that said, I'm excited because uh, my daughter's at um, Sky's actually going to go to Chestertown, and she's going to be Lakeisha's personal assistant. And of course, you know Jordan's there because he uh, he has to run equipment, and, and um, Brandon's going to be there with Lucy. So the family is coming up, but we're leaving Nene and Mimi home. <laughs> they they won't be there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you probably too hot anyway. Yeah, that, you probably did them a favor. Yeah, them two would be pains. All right, well it's time to let the ladies mm. out of the queue and welcome Miss Akins and Kelly Hollins in there. So y'all y'all have a great show and Batman. Hey, hey, I appreciate hey, you guys and love you very much and see you real soon. Amen. We love you too, Batman. We love you too. Thank you guys so much. So, um, just in case you guys are wondering about my voice, I have been in the studio all day and I'm pretty much out, but I'm giving you my, like, my, like, horsiness of the voice. So just love on it, love on it, love on it. (laughs) We're going to love on it. (laughs) Well, welcome, welcome everyone to the Christian Party Line. It's been a while since I've been on, but I've been behind the scenes supporting and loving on the ladies and you guys. And um, so I'm... I'm here, and I feel at home. I hope Paula G stayed on with us for just a little bit. CG, you here with us? I am here, voice of an angel. Lady wisdom after midnight. (laughs) I still call you that, but I haven't had a chance to say it on a Saturday (laughs) morning. Lady wisdom after midnight, how are you? Yes. I am absolutely wonderful. It is good to hear your horsiness voice. (laughs) I probably should have had some tea before I came on, before I came on, but you, you don't really get the feel of it until like later on. Like I'm all pumped on adrenaline when I'm, when I'm recording and then finally it just relaxes. It does. It does. There with me. Then later. It kicks in later. Cause I usually drink some like after if, if I'm doing voice work and mm-hmm. I'll usually have, mm-hmm. some, I'll usually have some after. And like you said, it kicks in later. Well, I'll do I it guess before, it would be but, like working uh, out. <clears throat> Yeah. It's, it's like uh, you work out, but then you don't feel it until maybe like the next day you wake up and you can't walk. But yeah. Yes. That means <laughs> the music's going to be good. Just take it for that. The music's going to be good. And we also have my sister Kelly Holland on the line with us. How are good you? Good morning. Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not heard of Miss Kelly Holland yet, I got a chance to interview her on the new hit show, The Red Room, that I am hosting another Positive Power 21 um, creation uh, with the Batman, Jerry Woods Live, a.k.a. the Batman. Uh, But I got a chance and had so much fun with you um, in taping. And now you're here with us. Tell us a little bit about what you have going on. Absolutely. And thank you again for this opportunity, Shay. Um, I had a great time um, being a guest on your show, and I thank you again for that opportunity. Um, over here on my side of the fence, we are a organization that is a non titled Life Academy, Inc. Life Academy stands for the Life Skill Institute of Finance and Education Academy. We teach financial literacy, workforce skills development, and we teach life skills to youth and adults. Um, mainly those that are living in at-risk youth communities, at-risk communities, excuse me. Outside of that, um, I also am an author. 
And my current book that's on Amazon right now um, through eBooks is titled Hit Over the Head with Unspeakable. And that book is a uh, quick read that helps you tap back into your unspeakable joy. It's an inspirational book, um, and very quickly it just touches on how I overcame um, a, a, a period of depression, a period of doubt, a period of hurt, a period of pain, and tap back into my joy, count my strength and overcame my challenges. Um, so it's just a testament to that. Outside of that, I like to speak. I like to I like to be involved. I like to volunteer. And I'm all here for the community. So thank you again, Shay, for having me on your show. It is a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And I'm looking to connecting with you more, of course. And we have um, we have the infamous, this beautiful lady. I haven't had the privilege of meeting her personally, but of course we crossed Past. Everybody crosses paths at some point on social media, um, but mm-hmm. I support her. She supports me. We're sharing one another stuff, loving one another stuff, and she just had an opportunity to interview with Paula G on the late night show with Jerry Royce, Miss Timberland Atkins. How are you? Hello, Shay. It is wonderful to speak with you <laughs> uh, verbally. <laughs> Every once a night, I've, I've I've got to hear you guys and and talk to you. So it's been great. Great. Thank you for inviting me on to, to talk with you tonight. No problem. No problem. It's, I mean, I'm, I, I got a chance to hear a bit of um, a bit, bit of your interview with Paula G. Lady Wisdom After Midnight. So you have to call her Lady Wisdom After Midnight. Um, yes, on ma'am. <laughs> Lady Wisdom After Midnight. I would ne- never, ever forget that. <laughs> <laughs> after midnight. And so, Ms. Timberland Atkins, for those of you who are just coming in on the midnight hours, late in the midnight hour. Yep. So, <laughs> we are t- she was talking about um, her her ministry, business, slash business, tag entertainment. Just give us a little bit of uh, that info for those who are just coming in on the 12 o'clock hour. Okay. I'm uh, Timberland Atkins. And I am the owner and CEO of Tag Entertainment Group, um, all around entertainment industry uh, company. I love all areas of the of entertainment. I am involved with management, marketing, branding, PR, consulting, just that whole support role that's needed for um, up and coming um, artists and uh, clients in all areas of small business and entertainment. Good. That's good. So if you guys are looking, guys and gals, because we always say guys, and I think we the girls be like, um, I need some love too. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for assistance in any of those areas, please, 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 please reach out to Tag Entertainment, Timelyn Atkins, and you can find her on social media, Timelyn Atkins, and everything else, Tag Entertainment. Is that ta- group? group? Tag Entertainment Group. Mm-hmm. Yes, I pay attention. See, (laughs) (laughs) I pay attention. (laughs) So, without further ado, we are going to do some shout outs before we start tonight. What we do on on the Christian Party Line, we're kind of the topic driven. um, It's a topic driven conversation that we have, and I'm going to provide you guys with this topic. But I do want to give a special shout out to um, the ladies who are missing tonight. The um, Life Speaks. The Speaks Life. Um, who is who has been putting in place to moderate. Thank you so much, V, for standing in the gap and moderating. And wherever you are, we're sending our love. Our sister, Shalonda Williams, her father passed, and we're sending our love to you. She's with her family tonight. Chanel Lynn Malloy, who may pop on at a later time, but we are sending our love to you. And Patrice Jackson, we want to say that we love you, feel better. And Lakeisha Mosley, who is preparing for tomorrow. Busy. Jerry keeps her busy. He keeps us all busy. Let's just put it out there. But Lakeisha Mosley has been doing her thing um, over there in Maryland. So we love you, Lakeisha. You're behind the scenes telling you, telling us that you love us. So we love you, and we miss you all tonight. All right. So without further ado, we are going to talk about um, – you know, it's been a while since I've talked about, like, in depth with these type of topics. And um, when I looked at this top, oh, Lakeisha's here. Lakeisha Mosley, you're on. Yes, I am. I'm here. So it's like, <laughs> uh, it, it's been a long day, but definitely I made sure I was here. 
on the yeah. party line to share with She my is a trooper. <laughs> well, we say, look, we, we really sound tired because Jerry works in us. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I work my lady keeping <laughs> real. <laughs> No, let's just keep it. No, Lakeisha, I really appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, you are going to be in Chestertown, Maryland tomorrow. Is that right? Yes, on Sunday. Um, I'm going to be there um, for the live taping of the Lakeisha Mosley show, but definitely preparing all day tomorrow for the um, show on Sunday. So um, definitely um, just keep us in prayer for our strength to get uh, a phenomenal show because it's really a great opportunity. Just so always, always. And make sure Jerry has some snacks, okay? That's the only thing Lady Wisdom and I ask, ask you. Make sure he has some snacks, yeah. which you should know. You should know by now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so we're yeah, gonna go absolutely. Right into, Be prepared. <laughs> we're going to go right into the topic tonight because I know that everyone has something to do. But the topic tonight, I love, and I'm going to talk about some of the key points. So uh, the title is Gave Them Up, and it's coming out of Rom- Romans one twenty. Four thirty-two. Um, it starts off with, in his righteousness, wrath, and judgment, God gives man up to the sin of our evil desires, allowing us to experience the self-destruction results of sin. This phrase is so important. Paul repeats it three times in the passage. We make a mistake when we think that, that it's God's mercy or kindness that allows man to continue in sin. I got to say that again. We make a mistake when we think that it's God's mercy or kindness that allows man to continue in sin. And I think it's, you know, in this day and age, um, and I want to talk about the church as a body, but, you know, um, as Christians, I think sometimes we kind of stray away from God forgives me because, let's just say dot, 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 dot. I can do this because, or, you know, uh, God knows my heart. How many times have we heard that lately? Ladies, you know, you see somebody mm. doing something in there and there, yeah. there's a few excuses. So I'm going to just go around the room. There's a few excuses. Mine would be, well, not mine personally, but what I hear people say something like when they are in sin, like, well, God knows my heart. Uh, Timelin, I'm going to come to you. What, are, what excuses do you hear for someone who wants to stay in, in sin and thinks that it's okay? Only God can judge me. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh-hoo. Kelly. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not ready yet. To some extent, some version of that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all are listening to this <laughs> or you're watching this <laughs> somewhere, Facebook Live, Speaker Radio, Spotify, wherever you're watching to this, and this is what you say every day, you need to be paying attention. Lakeisha Mosley, what excuses do you hear for someone to actually want to to you know, they know they're in sin, but their excuse is what? Um, the excuse that I remember um, vividly is, um, well, um, I'm just starting. It's, you know, God understands this is really just um, what I'm doing right now. And um, in a couple of years, it's when I get together, I'll, I'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> Lady Wisdom, you want to jump in on that? Yes, yes. God is not through with me yet. Oh, oh wow. yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, that's the one I was trying to say. God is, God is yeah. not through with me yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting on that one because, you know, the fact that we can act. I did a post a while ago. I was just driving down the road, and I always say the car is like my, you know, my. that's where I get most, the most of my um, inspiration. But I was driving to work, and I just started thinking. And, you know, confusion, how people talk about confusion. And I said, confusion is an excuse to stay in disobedience. Um, But just like what we just said regarding the excuses that people use, the fact that you have to use it, you know that you are in error. The fact that you know to say, God ain't done with me yet. The fact that you know to say, you know, God knows my heart. (laughs) The fact that you choose to say, I'm a babe in Christ. I'm still a babe. That's why like my daughter saying, you know, I didn't know how to, I don't do the dishes because I'm I'm six years old. Well, I'm only six. Well, she's not six. She's twenty four. But I'm only 
56, you know, these excuses that we use. And so I want to talk about that. We make a mistake when God, we make a mistake when we think that God's mercy or his kindness allows us to remain in sin. So Lakeisha, I'm going to start with you because I do, I want you to get off the line so that you can get some rest, but I'm going to start with you and I'm going to go to Paula G, Lady Wisdom After Midnight. Why is it that we feel it's okay to stay in that sin? Um, I really, um, and none of you guys can relate to this, um, honestly, I really feel like sometimes when we are, um, in the condition, um, state of mind, um, of doing it the same way over and over again, um, Mm -hmm. it becomes the norm, um, in a sense, um, of being, um, dysfunctional, um, doing something over and over again, um, that we knew was wrong at first, Mm -hmm. but as Mm -hmm. you keep doing it it becomes the norm, if you understand. Like, you know, if, yeah. if, if I'm abusing you, you know, the first time, man, I'm sorry. I'm going to send flowers. I'm going mm-hmm. to, you know, um, soothe mm-hmm. you. I, pr- I promise you this is this, it's because I'm tired. It's because I'm, you know, um, just getting off all this frustration and I took it out on you the first time. Yeah. And the second and third time, it's like I, you didn't get that same sorry because it's, it's almost like condition now of your dysfunction. That's just an example. Okay. Um, Apology, Lady Wisdom. I said I was going to come to you, but Tim, I'm going to ask you this as a add-on to what Lakeisha just said because, it, like she said, it becomes repetitive, and then I believe that a certain level of conviction should come um, upon anyone who says that they are following Christ or they're a believer that even though it's uh, it, it, that what you're saying, it becomes habitual. But you you know, what about the conviction? Shouldn't there be a certain level of conviction for someone who understands, one, God's word, but two, that the Bible says make love your highest priority? Shouldn't there be a certain level of conviction that comes with that habitual offense? Um, um, actually, yes. I mean, I agree with that. Um, there should be that level of um, where you're you're actually saying this is, this is not right, this is not the norm. Um, I, I, I think that with us knowing that um, we actually are believers in the word, we we know the word, uh, we may not be babes in Christ, um, but what we continually to do and accept is it becomes our reality. And, mm. It, mm. and, and I look at it like that. It, it, the perception that you may have or what you continue to allow or do is based off of what has become your reality. And wow. so the more that you do that, the more that you accept, the more that you make excuses, the more that you, you know you're being convicted. It's just what you have built as your own reality. And so that's how I see it. I view it as it becoming your reality. Yeah, and that's a good point, too, because the excuses, are, I mean, we, we named about five at the top of the conversation. Those are excuses, you know, the fact that you have to say it. And it's funny because you say it to people that you know. <laughs> You don't say it to the friends who are in the mess with you, right? right. <laughs> you don't say it to the people. You don't say God knows my heart to somebody that is running the same race you're running. You say it to someone that you admire, you know that they're walking upright or you think they're up walking upright, but you don't say it to people that you know. Um, Kelly, I'm going to come to you with this one, but, you know, mm-hmm. I love how, you know, um, we were talking earlier here today um, about what you put into the earth, it, you know, it gives it gives that back. The earth gives that back to you. Um, and there's a second part to this. It says it is actually his wrath that allows us to go on destroying ourselves with sin. We don't even realize. I, I'm gonna read that again. It says it is actually his wrath that allows us to go on destroying ourselves with sin. So where we think that God is comforting and forgiving and putting us in a place of, you know, well, go ahead and sit comfortable in this sin. Um, when I read that, I thought about someone smoking cigarettes, you know, um, or someone who drinks and they drank all their lives up until a certain age. And then they ended up having some type of liver disease. And they're like, you hear those people say, well, I drank all my, all my life. And now I got the liver disease. That didn't just happen. That didn't just happen. Correct. 
And that happened, that happened over time. So what would you say about that? And, and it, it, it's actually his wrath that allows us to go on destroying ourselves with sin. How can you equate what I just read to everyday living, everyday life in everyday sin? See, that's the problem. Some, some way, shape, or form, sin is justified. And mm-hmm. the language that we use um, is very important because um, our words have very much strong power. And so when we sit back and we think how we're going to react to a problem, how are we going to react to a, a need, a desire, your, um, a lust, a habit, a routine? How do we respond to things when we want change? Well, my bishop says at New Solomon that you have to get acquainted with your new reality. I'm getting accustomed to my new reality. Your new reality reality requires a difference of change and a difference of mind and, a, and, and that spirit of discernment. So you can tap back, here I go, plug in, tap back into your unspeakable joy. And I say that easily um, and vaguely, but but it is very much common, you know, um, case in point, um, women out here, here I go, here I go, being transparent. I was married for 17 years, recently divorced. What am I supposed to do about my grown up time, my intimate time? Mm-hmm. How do I satisfy those, those desires? I've always had a husband and now I don't. I'm divorced. Mm-hmm. Do I do? I'm in my mm-hmm. second year of discipleship. I'm That's a Christian. Good. What do I do? <laughs> How do I that's handle good. this? Okay, mm-hmm. that's a real frustration right there. Anybody that's been in my shoes, how do you manage that? You got kids, you go to the gym. You know, <laughs> you, you distract yourself. Yes. But, but what about those days when I'm not so strong? What about those mm-hmm. Fridays when I've had a couple glasses of wine? What about <laughs> when I'm pretty to someone and they, and they feel like buying me dinner? What about, what about those real-life encounters that we have to experience as Christians? And do we call that sin? Do we justify yeah. those actions? Do, you yeah. know, so it, so it really comes really down good. to: Am I am I am I doing this to justify me, or am mm. I putting God first and letting Him reward me? And that's mm. that's where we we seem to forget. And here, I, one more transparent transparent moment, and I'll leave it alone. I was I was entertaining something. I'll just put it like that, and um and and, and I'm a strong believer in God sending me messages. However, especially when I get in my car, Card. It's just he and I, and I turn that radio on, and whatever I need to hear, boom, there it is. I don't control the radio, so I take it personally. He's speaking to me through song. So when I, when I go through all of that, and I hear songs, song, but I'll make room for you, then I got to realize I haven't been in church in two weeks. Then mm. songs like, you, you know what I mean? When, when, yeah. when God is showing you, you're not here. You're not present. Where is your mind? Are you distracted? Where have you mm. been lately? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to let you fool around so you can see for yourself. But at the end of the day... Are you going to come to me? Are you going to commit to me? Are you loyal to me or to your sin? So I yeah. war with that every day. Every single day I war with that. All day long I war with that. Wow. And hey, as long as I'm warring with it, I'm not committing it. So that's the best I can do right now. <laughs> wow. And I thank you for your transparency because I feel when we do talk like that, and I love that we can do this on the call, um, you know, <laughs> that the fact that we can be in a, you know, we can put ourselves People need to know how real we are. I think that's the that's the challenge in today's you know community of the body in that body in the body of Christ is that we're not transparent enough. We want to show people the good side, but we don't want to show people the overcoming the the process mm-hmm. that we're in. You know that caterpillar um, cocoon process that we go right. and go in, and then you have people who are looking at us even when we're talking about sin. The fact that you're you know oh my goodness. Uh, come on, that you attempted <laughs> with it, you know, and you and you're saying I'm warring with it. But then what we want to show people is, um, you know, we're we're sitting upright. We we don't sin. I don't even steal a pencil or a pen from my office, um, you know. <laughs> and then you have people who are set up to uh, model after after that. Who wouldn't feel discouraged? Who wouldn't Mm -hmm. feel beat up? Who wouldn't feel that they would never get it right when all you're putting in front of them is this model picture of of the perfect Christian, the perfect Mm -hmm. believer? It's not fair to the body of Christ, especially babes in Christ. Women want women who are transparent. And and so, um, Paula G., Lady Wisdom After Midnight, I want to ask you this because as Kelly was talking, I was thinking about 
um, a person wearing dirty clothes for, and I'm going to say, because at one point it has to be considered dirty. It's like you wore it, you know, you wore it the day before and now you wear it again. Somebody might consider that dirty, but to the person that's wearing it again might say, I didn't spill a drink on it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so what? You know, they're looking at you like, well, what do you consider dirty? Because I didn't spill anything on it. In fact, the white shirt is not even dingy. So it's still, you know, it, you can get away with it for more. But when you, when you were talking, Kelly, I was just thinking about someone who would put, you know, dirty clothes on. How, how long, and this is for you, um, Paula, PG, Lady Wisdom After Midnight, um, how long can you wear a dirty outfit before it starts to like cringe on your body. Mm. You know, when, when my sister was just talking, you know, a moment ago, it, it, it and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a answer your question in a minute. Uh, you know, I was just thinking about it really speaks to, we really have to be careful. Um, and, and I'm just saying this in general, we really have to be careful about judging people, you know, Mm-hmm. Because I I can I can remember and as you were you were talking I remember a, a friend of mine it was almost the same thing that she was saying that you know before when she had been married over twenty something years and she was very judgmental of single women until mm-hmm. she found herself single mm. and then her whole perspective changed and she felt convicted you know at that time because there were some things that she was you know then uh, struggling with you know as a as as a single woman so you know wow. when we're we're all on this journey we really you know have to be aware and and each of us check ourselves and not be judgmental you know of others cuz our lives can change in at the drop of a hat and we find ourselves you know on um you know, on the other side of, of, of the situation. So, True. you know, I, I applaud you for being, you know, so transparent because what, what you say is real, you know, what you say is absolutely real for those of us, you know, been married 17, 20, 25, 30 years plus, and then you find yourself, you know, in a single situation, um, you know, you can, it can be really real. But to answer your question about how long can you wear, you know, those dirty clothes, I th- I believe that it depends, and it goes back to what we were saying before about what becomes your norm. Mm-hmm. You know, doing something for for mm-hmm. so long. Mm-hmm. I, you know, some sometimes you could you could look at someone's clothes, and I work with at risk. I think I heard my sister earlier talking about at risk youth. I work with mm-hmm. at risk youth, and a lot of times, you, what I've found and what I've learned is that wh- what is perceived as um, what could be perceived as as dirty for one it is in fact the norm for another yeah you know so i think when it when it comes to dirty you know how long do we wear these dirty clothes i think it it's an individual thing in that we have to define for ourselves what is dirty we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and define yeah. you know for ourselves where we are you know, in this process where we are on this, on this journey and, you know, how we define that determines when or if, if those dirty clothes come off. Yeah. And that's you know, really because, good. Cause somebody like me, my skin crawls. Mm-hmm. Like if I even mm-hmm. put the same shirt on, you know, and I'm not, it's not to judge anyone, but like mm-hmm. just knowing that I had it on yesterday, I think about where, where was I when I had this on, what was on me? I think of like, I'm, I'm kind of, OCD when it comes down to that kind of stuff. Right, right. But my right. brother, on the other hand, he can wear outfits for a whole week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and put <laughs> on spray some cologne you know, on and brush his hair, you know. <laughs> but, you know I think, but I think, too, that you know, sometimes I think that there's certain things that we, have, we, we look at that can be, and, and maybe I might be going a different direction than this, but as you're talking about uh, dirty clothes and so forth. You know, I've, I've traveled, you know, outside of the country and lived outside of the country. Mm-hmm. And we we are really a sterile society. Mm-hmm. As Americans, we really are a sterile society. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. there are other cultures where 
um, and I want to say this, I don't want to, I don't want to say this wrong because there are other cultures where bathing on a daily basis is not necessarily a priority because there are other life bearing things that are a priority. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, I, so I think it, I think it, it really is, it's really contingent upon perspective. Yeah. And, and I think, think and that's why I'm glad you said that yeah. because that's where, that's where I was going with it. It's all about perspective. The, mm-hmm. the clothes, the dirty clothes that I was referencing is like the sin that we carry on, on our backs. Yeah. We go out every day wearing what we would consider, and it goes back to what you just mm-hmm. said to Kelly. You have to be mindful of what you think of others and how you judge others because you, you don't really know what that person or when you will be in that person's shoes. You don't know that person overcame. Mm-hmm. You don't know. We talked about it in previous shows where a young lady could be just coming from a strip club because God spoke to her right in that strip club from the strip mm-hmm. club to the church on Sunday and had nothing else to wear. And the church will judge her by what she has on. So here she's no longer even feeling natural in the environment that she was in. Come on. She's not feeling natural in the environment that she was in. And then she comes to what's new and she's feeling rejected there. So I think we really do have to be careful with how we perceive the way that we see someone's sin too. So that's the flip side of it. And that's where I was going with it. So it's easy to say that person is in sin, but, what, well, how, what how and why are we receiving situation. it? Yeah. 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 Uh, from, similar, yeah. I think there's a difference between, you know, being like we were, you were talking about earlier, the, 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 the conscious, you know, well, God knows my heart or God mm-hmm. is not, you know, using those excuses versus like you said, sometimes there, that we don't, sometimes we don't know what has preceded what we see and perceive as sin to your point. Yeah. Point of the example that you just gave, you know. So, he, so Timlin, um, Timlin Atkins, I'm going to bring this to you because Paula, you you guys are just counting off of one another. So, Lady Wisdom after midnight, you know what you just brought up a good point. Kelly brought up a good point, but let me just ask this because then you have people who don't even know how to un, uh, uh, you, they don't even know where to begin to take that off. Like, okay, so we talked about that became the reality. We mm-hmm. talked about you know they they that's their normal. You know, we're walking, we're clothed in sin um, and, and not righteousness. But how, how, are we, uh, how are we helping the people who are in that level of bondage? How can we help the people that's in that level of bondage? The people, and I'm just going to stick with the clothes because that's how God's given it to me. But how are we helping the people, how are we helping that person one by one to take those clothes off? one by one, those layers, thank you, those layers, how are we helping people to do that rather than judging them? How should we be helping them? Okay, um, well, for me, it, okay, who, who, is it for me or for Lady Wisdom? For Tim Lynn Atkins. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so for me, just me saying from my perspective of dealing with uh, someone and not being uh, judgmental and um, just wanting to to help them get to the next level of um, of their journey and to, like you said, shed off of those things from the past. Now, in my role as a as someone who supports and someone who's there and, and me not being judgmental, not being judgmental is me looking at myself first. Mm-hmm. As, mm-hmm. For one thing is me looking at myself, um, seeing that, you know, we all have challenges and, and struggles and things that we go through. Through. What is it for me to judge another? Meaning, mm-hmm. what is it for me to look down on them, to mm-hmm. not want to help someone else who is struggling in a certain area that I may not be struggling of, of course, but that I can I can support them, I can encourage them, I can I can be that support that they need in order for them to, as you say, shed layer after layer. Mm-hmm. So if I'm if I'm if I have love in my heart, as the word says, and and I go back real quick to uh, Jeremiah 31.3, he says, I have love 
you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. It's up to me to be kind to that person. Mm -hmm. It's up to me to want to share the word with them, to show them love and and to let them see that I'm no different from you. I have my own struggles, my own challenges, but I'm here, sister, brother, whomever it may be may be to help you in an area that I may not be struggling in, but I can support you and help you. And so, I mean, that's the way I see it. It is for me to show that love to them, not to look down, not to, not to talk about them, but to be there to help them get out of what they're going through because they may help me in some areas that I'm struggling in, but we need to support each other and we need to help each other move to the next level. Like you said, shed it, shed it. Yeah. Each level. And that's what it's all about. It's like that one, one brings one. The school system has this like pay. It. I don't know if it's the school system that's pay it forward, but I used to hear this all the time. Pay it forward, pay it forward, pay it forward, pay it forward. Somebody did it for you at one point. We weren't always where we are. You know, we, we can be on the radio. We can be doing whatever we're doing as far as our ministries are concerned, but somebody had to pick us up and somebody's probably still picking us up every now and then if we're, if we're being mm-hmm. honest about it, somebody's still picking us up, um, you know, somebody's still picking this up. Um, but there's a lot of people who are just uh, bound in that, in that, um, in that sin. I want to ask you one more question, Tim, because I wanted to ask this before. Um, but there's a part here that says in every rebellion and every disobedience against God, we exchange the truth of God for the lie of our own. <laughs> mm. I'm going to read it again. What happened there? Right. <laughs> In every rebellion and disobedience against God, we exchange the truth of God for the lie of our own. Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. Oh, my we goodness. Did. We do. Oh, my but think about it like this on a simple base. This is Kelly speaking. Um, am I feeling when I go to the market and I eat a grape? Yeah, I am. I might eat a handful of your grapes, too. Before I leave your market. I want to know if it's sweet or not. It's like, is that feeling? I think it is on some minute level. And so when it comes down to me, sometimes I find myself as weighing this sin. <laughs> and then I'm trying to figure out, well, David was going to kill. So if David was his favorite and he was going to kill, then I know me cutting his car off ain't that bad. So it's like, so, you know what I mean? It's like, what are we doing? Like, are we measuring our sin? Because if that's yeah. the case, I don't think I can get through a day without one of little itty-bitty sin. I don't think I can. I, I I don't think I have. I don't think, I don't think in his word that he says we're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Run late for work, you're going to run that stop sign or that red light. Tell the truth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it done. <laughs> Consider it done. I break all type of laws on this road. See, and look, and then I'll give you a quote and I'll say, Your Honor. Matter of fact, last time I went to court, I said, Your Honor. Honor. I did it all. I did it all. Please give me leave. <laughs> so, this is what happened. And he sure did give it to me. I said, look, look, look. One, ask not, want not. <laughs> Can you please be ringing? I'm sorry to go off tangent. It was just so funny when I was no, speaking that's that okay. that's what it's all about. We want to fellowship with one another. I promise you, I, whatever we say, I know that it blesses the listeners. Um, and there's, like, there's always, just the fact that we can be that transparent. I'm, I mean, I go back to that because you don't get that in a lot of, um, a lot of the ministry, you don't get it. You, you know, everyone wants you to see what they, what they have. But Keisha Mosley, are you still with us? I am, and I am woke. I mean, you're, you're talking <laughs> just truth right now and transparency. You know, that's what I'm all about. So, um, definitely, I am all ears. <laughs> well, I want to. I do want to go back to you. I want to go back to you with the. We make a mistake when we think that God's mercy or His kindness that, that allows man to continue in their sin. It says, and he and it is actually his wrath that allows us to go on destroying ourselves with sin. I wanted to come back to that one with you because you know we deal with people. <laughs> I go back to Job, right? <laughs> Job did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Job was in the middle of a barter between Satan and God. He did nothing. He was doing everything he was supposed to be doing, and God blessed him. And then one day, it all was taken. And guess what Job's friends did? What they said? What did you do? <laughs> that was that was the first thing they said. They knew his character. 
they knew they knew that Joe was an upright guy. I mean, you for you to be partying with this guy the way that they were partying, and I'm saying this for you know in layman's terms, but for you to be with this guy's family, for you to be with you know, you've seen how he's employed people, and that the very first sight of a fall, they automatically thought that he was in sin. How many times do we do that? Oh wow. Uh, we do that a lot, a lot of times, and it's so. Uh, uh, I think it's um, it's really something that we uh, do more often than others. A lot of times, we judge folks because, oh, wait a minute, what happened here? You know, you lost this business, you lost this money, this income, um, you lost this relationship. What did you do wrong? You know, and most mm-hmm. people, mind you, they're in business um, to be in your business. You know, a Ooh. lot of times they they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <You're perfect. laughs> they don't know That's everything perfect. all what happened right and they're just kind of um, on the outside looking in have no idea all the pieces of the puzzle and they don't know i have no idea um that it's just just the attacks of the enemy you know we have a true mm-hmm. enemy and the enemy is attacking them too so that's the thing the enemy is attacking all of us in our different um lanes in our journey and a lot of times you know, because yours is out in the open right now you know, I'm, I'm judging you right now, but a lot of times, you know, we forget that we were there before, and we forget that we were in that situation, and a lot of times we mm-hmm. uh, put our names on something and begin to comment on something that we have no idea um, their business, but a lot of times we forget that we're probably going through the same thing. You know, a lot of times yeah. I know that people, when they judge, right, they they say things and it's like they're going through the same thing, but mind you, their situation is is uh, like a reprobate mind. They they don't see what they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of times they're mm-hmm. judging you and they have no idea they're going through the same mm-hmm. thing. Thank you, Akeisha. That blessed me. That blessed me. That blessed me. That blessed me. I'm going to come to Timberland. Or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, nor neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor famines, homosexuality, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkenness. He goes on and on and on and on. And I was, you know, because um, you guys do a lot of social media promotions and things like that. And social media has become one of those avenues where you got to protect your eyes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You got to protect your eyes, which is connected to your heart and the things that you see. And sometimes I see things on social media and I'm very grieved about how distasteful. Um, and this is people in the body. This isn't just like regular. Most of the people on my page are connected somewhere in the ministry. But to see certain things that come out there. But I want to go to the social media aspect of, of, of this um, because social media allows people to see allows you to see what people want you to see. And a lot of that for me, um, it's not, it's not that that it's in itself is sin, but because we're trying to mimic a life that people want us to see, I don't know why I always go to Atlanta housewives, but that's like, one of the, <laughs> that's one of the things I'm like, everyone wants to be something that they cannot be. And you might have someone on social media, and I'm asking this to Timberland Atkins, but you might have somebody on social media who is really, like, faithful in their walk. Yes, we all sin. But this person might put up scripture every day. They might be doing some videos to encourage people. They might put up a quote to her. And you see, and I know that I know I'm not, like, a numbers person, but you see, like, one like, and that's them. And then you see somebody say something that is sinful, distasteful, and it's about 145,000 likes. Am I telling the truth? Hey, you are. <laughs> I see it too. And it's called, what do they call that? What do they call huh? that keyboard? Key, I said, what do they call that keyboard courage? Ooh, is that that's a new word, Lady Wisdom? You just taught me that keyboard. Somebody hashtag that, please. Keyboard mm-hmm. courage. Is keyboard that like the courage. the liquid courage? Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's on the same line. <laughs> but you know, 
So, Tim Lynn, that, that pastor says, or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? When we're on social media, and I'm saying this because we have a lot of people, even even on this line who deal with social media every day, we have to be mindful of what we're putting on social media. Why is that so important? I think your real personality comes out in social media because it's just a form of communication, a, a very distant, fictitious form of communication. Okay. But, but you know, I, 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 in my opinion, I think they're being completely honest, and that's the sad mm. part about it. Mm. <laughs> You know, the who they are, it was a little, you know, sprinkled a little fraud over it. But for the most part, that's what you're getting. If, if she's a HOE in real life, she's putting it on social media and wow. vice versa. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, so that just says it. Or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So women who on there like the HOEs and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and saying, you know, we're not judging. We're just saying you have to be mindful you have to be mindful you have to be mindful um ladies we are at the top of our hour already it's already one o'clock oh. <laughs> it's already <laughs> one o'clock it's already one o'clock jerry if you give us just a little bit of time i do want to go around the room because we don't have a lot of our women on tonight i do want to go around the room though and just ask for some words of encouragement from everyone um who you know just based off of our topic tonight and i want to keep it to the um I like I like the clothes the clothing um analogy taking those layers off um so let's just talk about that peeling the layers off let's inspire someone to start peeling the layers off and come out of that what we make our reality a reality so I'm going to start with Paula G Lady Wisdom After Midnight what I would say to encourage uh, someone to, to take those layers off because we all have them is it's a journey they were put on in the first place for a reason or reasons Mm -hmm. you know we when we have experiences in our life and even when we sin sometimes it's a result of other things and so I would just invite everyone to First of all, be kind to yourself, forgive yourself, ask God for forgiveness, and then ask him to lead you and guide you in, in how to, to peel those layers off. And in the process of peeling those layers, you may expose some old wounds mm. and asking him to lead you and guide you in how to heal those old wounds properly so that once you shed those dirty clothes, you will not not put them back on you will not put them back on but in the process be prayerful ask for that guidance from him ask for that wisdom ask for that discernment ask for that forgiveness embrace that journey and he will lead you and guide you to shedding those dirty clothes amen Lakeisha Mosley amen Um, uh, I uh, Remember a uh, a uh, a dialogue that we talk about when it comes to uh, agriculture and it comes to plants and, and planting a garden. And a lot of times uh, we see the roses at the, the end process, you know, blooming. But there's a process that's going on in the seed, you know, and then going into the ground, you know, and fertilizing and uh, water is being um, put on that um, that plant and uh, the process is growing but we forget that you know there's bugs there's different weeds that Mm -hmm. back on you know and we have to understand that that's a part of the process as well so my encouragement is to you as far as understanding taking off the layers is that is needed and that's a part of the process to never feel ashamed to never feel worried to never feel like you're by yourself because in order for you to bloom a great garden of beautiful roses, you know, and similar uh, flowers, you have to go through the process and let those weeds um, root itself out and, you know, uproot them as a process of jealousy, as a process of anger, as a process 
of insecurities and selfishness. That is a process that, you know, sometimes you won't understand it until you see it. You know, until you see those weeds, until you see those bugs, you wow. don't know to pull them out. Wow. So wow. my encouragement is to let you know, look, we're all going through the process. You will see some deep, dark, and ugly, but understand that God already saw it before you saw it. So understand, just let the process grow. This is a marathon, not a sprint, and that God is in control. I promise you, you'll be a nice plant uh, full of roses at the end of your journey. Yeah. Amen. Kelly Holland? Thank you. Um, this reminds me of an old Sinbad joke. In Sinbad, he was to say when he was in college, there's dirty clothes and then there's funky clothes. And, then, and the way he put it, he said, dirty clothes you can wear again. You know, that's what you threw on, didn't really do much in, and you, you know, come home, put it back in your closet. And then there's funky. Funky, funky is funky, and you must wash it. Well, <laughs> when I see Amen. people in that, Okay, and when I see people that are stuck in their cave, their metaphoric muddy mountain, um, stuck in those same clothes, stuck in that area of depression, stuck in that area of loss, I first want to come to them with an introduction. Hello, beautiful. You are beautiful. Male, female, you are beautiful. You are loved. And there is a purpose for you. So let's tap back into your unspeakable joy. Let's figure out what it is you want it to accomplish and let's get back to that self-love are we protecting our time are we protecting our money are we protecting our energy are we learning what self-love means if not let me coach you and then i'll go through it day in and day out until they realize how important they are to themselves so whoever you are if you're stuck in your mountain never forget to tap back into that unspeakable joy Amen. And, and Ms. Timberly Atkins. All right, amen. So everything that everyone said <laughs> is a piggyback <laughs> off of off of what everyone said. But to me, it is baby steps of yeah. looking at yourself and we say self love, but truly learning to love yourself like you want others to love you and how you want to reciprocate love back to them. When you get that down in you of loving yourself like that, you're open to whomever steps into your life that God has put along this destiny journey for you to help you with those other things and other, other layers of uh, challenges that we have. So Mm -hmm. for us to open up the word and to receive what God has for us, I don't think that, and even for myself, when I'm not loving myself, when I didn't have that love for myself, me reading the word was me reading the word, okay? But when I got to that level and where I got to that place where I truly loved myself, I could receive all of what God was yeah. saying. I could receive yeah. all that what people were reciprocating onto me because I love myself that much to accept his word, his love, and what others want to put on to me, their love to me, and I can give it back to them. Amen. 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 Well, ladies, I'm going to just say my word, and then we are going to head out after I ask you the one last question. But I do want to say, as we take off the layers, God is so grateful that he replaces what even we give up. And so he replaces it. And when we start taking off the layers, it allows us a level of increase, just like Timberland just said, a level of increase that that we haven't even tapped into because we've been holding on to the old. And so I'm going to encourage everyone to step out of the old and start walking into the new. You know, the ministry is all about purpose. And so in order for you to get to the next level of your purpose, you have to start unlayering uh, one by one, step by step, bit by bit. And working out, there's always going to be an opportunity for you to go in and start doing what you see the person next to you doing, but you don't know how long they've been doing that. So do like I do. Start off with five I sit up and then do 10 and then do 15. It's okay. You see Paula G on, on, don't, don't be intimidated. Paula's been doing this for a long, long, long time. Oh. But you have to take the babies, take the baby steps, start layering one, start unlayering one by one by one. And I could go somewhere else with this, but to everything, there is a season because you're not going to wear uh, layers of clothes in the summer. You got to know when to start taking them off. You got to know when to start covering up, but cover up with, you can cover up with dirty clothes, just not the funky ones. Okay. 
<laughs> well, ladies, I want to thank you all for being a part of the Christian Party Line tonight. Again, shout out to V Life, V Speaks Life, Monique. Um, Shalonda, Patrice, and Chanel Lynn Malloy. And I do want to say a special thank you to the ladies on the line tonight. Paula G, Voice Lady Wisdom After Midnight, Lakeisha Mosley, Kelly Holland, and Timberland Atkins of Tag Entertainment Group. I love you ladies, and thank you so much for joining. And I have one last question. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? <laughs> I feel the power. Yes. Yeah. Feel the power. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power. A double X. Worldwide podcast. That's right. You tell them, little buddy. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the next man up. Late man, hmm, late night with Jerry was live and the Christian party line. That's right. It was triple, triple podcast. That's right. Friday night, triple podcast. Come on, Batman. You can do it. Yeah, they had me up late. <laughs> but we can do it. But thank you so much. Join us next week. Right back again with the triple podcast on Friday night. Right with the ladies of Christian Radio right here. And don't forget about Next Man Up with Dr. Paul Kelly and Pastor Steven and John E. Ross. All right, and Mr. Pro Fact out to Seattle. He'll be back. All right, everybody, everybody have a great weekend. And don't forget you can catch all of these podcasts on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Castbox, Google Play, and Spreaker Radio. All right, and don't forget to come out to mbtv-21.com and check us out. We got a lot of stuff out there, y'all, a lot of content. That's right, come on out, y'all. All right, have a good night. We out here, Batman and John City. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walsh Live, worldwide. in the garden but I was afraid so I hid myself because I was naked who
This session is no longer being recorded.
Thank mm-hmm. you.